Today you're getting my best high-end farmhouse project tutorials.
Today we'll make this gorgeous sign with things from Dollar Tree and stuff you already have at home. Uh, decorative posters that I got from Dirt Cheap that actually originally came from uh, Target. And then two of these Valentine signs that came from Dollar Tree. I've just taken the little metal hearts off of that for another project. I'm going to glue it together with popsicle sticks and some Gorilla Glue sticks. This is just to keep them firmly together without folding tape or glue wouldn't be strong enough for this. So we want it to be, to be able to hold the weight of that gather sign once we put that on there. Just showing you how to do that. There are bigger popsicle sticks you can use if you need to. All right, so we were just flipping it over and I'm gonna take out this poster. It's a lot bigger than I thought it would be. Um, so I'm just going to lay it out and mark off the size and then I'm going to cut out that piece of paper and put the rest of it aside for another project. Okay, so when you have wrinkled paper like this, if you'll gently fold against where that wrinkle is, you can press some of that out, but we'll get it all out later. Okay, so I have overhang on both sides and both ends, and that's okay. I started with the glue stick, and I was unhappy with the coverage. It seemed kind of sticky and gross, so I've got some spray adhesive that also came from Dollar Tree, and I'm just going to spray that. Pretty good coat on there. You can see in some spots it looks kind of wet. And then I'll lay that poster paper back down. It's thin. It, it, it's not a really thick. It's not like cardstock. So it's pretty pretty easy to work with and get the wrinkles out. I'm just trying to press it down to make sure there's no air bubbles and to make sure that it's sticking well. And it looks like it's repositionable, so that's great. And I'm just using my Dollar Tree ruler to press out any wrinkles or bubbles that might be in there. I like this better than Mod Podge because you do get a lot of nasty bubbles and um, you don't have that with this adhesive or with glue sticks really um, as far as my look has been anyway. Okay, so once you've given that time to dry, you're just going to take a sanding block from Dollar Tree and just sand down from the top on the sides. It's going to give you a nice smooth edge and it will look like it came that way. Just like it was store bought. You just keep sanding. Try not to pull. You don't want to tear anything. But if, if a piece is frayed and hanging there, you can kind of give it a little gentle pull and take that off. And you want to do that all the way around top, bottom, and both sides. I learned this trick from other YouTubers that I watch that do craft videos. Okay, so I used chalk paint to, change, to paint my gather sign. I used about three coats, um, and that's, that gather sign did come from Dollar Tree. It's kind of heavy. So I wanted to get an idea of where I wanted to place it, and also I knew that I wanted some type of a frame, so I'm using these tumbling tower game blocks that you can get at Dollar Tree. It's just in the kids' toy section, and trying to get an idea of spacing and the layout here. It's easier to, to give it a dry run than it is to glue it down and then decide you don't like it or it doesn't fit correctly because these blocks are not always the same measurement. They're not always the same size. So you just need to be, be careful about that, be mindful about that. So if you wanted to do it all the way around the edges like this, you certainly could, but you can you can change it and do it any way you want. And I decided I just wanted it on the top and bottom, kind of like um, the other wall hangings that you see that look more like a like a scroll or something. Um, sort of like that idea. So I'm just using my glue. I'm lining it up. I don't want to put it between each block because it will cause some bulk in there and I, I want it to be 
kind of a smooth even line so I'm just going to put that Gorilla Glue stick just going to apply that to the bottom and then to the board lining it up between the edge of the board and the block that's right beside it that'll give you a nice straight edge but if you really want it to be super straight you can put a ruler down there you can put a, a long piece of wood under it or whatever um, a level straight edge whatever you want to do but this is farmhouse so it's not intended to be perfect anyway as you will see when I put my last block down there's a little bit of extra edge there that it didn't cover so I'll use the same amount on the top and bottom that still happens so I'm going to use some of this Gorilla Glue and go around on the sign which I'm, as I said before it's, it's a little heavy and bulky so you want to be sure that you get a good application of glue on this but not enough to squish out when you press it down try to stay in the center of your letters and I'm just gonna gently press it down to make sure that it sticks and I've decided that I want to use um, like a rope on the sides I have this thick yarn that I've used before in the pumpkin video and I'll link that video for you so you can watch that and I'm just tying a knot on each end whatever length you want however far down you want it to hang and I'm just gonna glue the knot to the block on the top and on the bottom of each side I'm just putting my clamp there so it doesn't move when I'm scooting it around to keep it in the camera so there we go there and then I'm gonna go right along the edge with a bead of glue to put that rope down it's kind of at an angle kind of on the edge kind of on the side and I do like the way that looks all right, then I'm going to take a hula skirt that I'm using as raffia, and I'm going to tie a simple little bow. I just took a, a chunk of it and cut it off and then tied my little bow. Yeah, I'm weird about bows. I like for things to be symmetrical, so I'm playing around there to make sure that my my rabbit ears are the same size and I decided that I want to place those on the sides maybe make it look like it's supporting the rope on the sides or the yarn on the sides I'm going to do the same thing for the other side so here's that hula skirt so you can see that it did come off of that hula skirt Here you can see how I'm tying it and that is it once you get that put together compare it to the other bow trim it up glue it down and it is complete and I love it my pretty little gather sign for Thanksgiving and fall and I hope that you will try it yourself I hope you'll subscribe we got lots more things coming and I appreciate you viewing please like it if there's something that you liked in this video and I'll see you again soon Bye. Sunflower wall decor from Dollar Tree Calendar. Keep watching. I've got some sunflowers here. A variety of ribbons and jute, scissors, glue gun, glue, a frame with a plexiglass front, and a calendar from Dollar Tree. This is what they look like. There's a big variety at Dollar Tree and you can get them out of the think over with the school back to school section. So I've just chosen this black with the sunflowers. Okay. Carefully tear that out. You can cut it with a razor or scissors if you want to but I don't mind that edge. Okay, so I'm going to take this frame apart. 
Just going to take the back off the frame, rather. And the frame came from Dirt Cheap. And there I am. Okay, so we're going to use the back of it and find placement where I want to put it. And you know, if you want to measure, you can to make sure that it's precise and exactly the same amount, but I don't care about all that. Doesn't matter to me. So I used some adhesive spray from Dollar Tree. Just be careful with that. It can be messy, it can make the page a little damp, and it can tear. I didn't have that problem, so just use my ruler to get the bubbles out. And there's still a few, but I don't mind that. I want to frame it out with a little bit of this jute. Any of you who have seen my videos before know how I feel about the overuse of hot glue. It's very hard to repurpose an item that's covered in glue. So, just want to go ahead and do this with as little as possible. So it's framed around the top and bottom there and then it goes all the way down from the top edge to the bottom edge. I saw a little mark on the paper here. I might have done that when I was getting the bubbles out, but went ahead and used a Sharpie and fixed it. Now you want to take your glass or your plexiglass, whatever you have there, and clean up all the fingerprints and dust. I think my measurements for this frame are 19 by 13. And I wanted it larger because I have plans for the bottom of it. So I'm just going to, after that's all clean, put that back together. And I want to use my ribbon across, well, I guess you can call that ribbon. And I use my burlap strip across the bottom because I want to make a pocket of sorts. Here I am just trying it out, trying to get an idea of where I want to put this. Okay, this part I use a little more glue. Not a ton, but a little more. And secure the sides down. I also went ahead and took my stapler and just tacked that down. had a misfire there had to go back now I want to trim it up we don't want the back looking bad and I will take the tags off at some point and then you choose a variety of ribbons that will coordinate with whatever picture that you chose from your calendar these came from Dollar Tree and I'm making a bow I have decided I'm going to purchase a bow maker or try to make one because my hands are small and I have to get the fabric so close to my body to hold it that I keep getting out of the camera range. And that's no good for you because you can't see what I'm doing. But if you get an idea here, I have six inch tails on this bow and I have five inch loops. And I'm going to do two loops on each side. And rather than stacking it, after the bow is made, I went ahead and chose to wrap it all at one time. So I have two layers here in my hands, one green and one of black and white um, checkered. When I finish making those loops, I'm going to measure the length of the tail. If you see the black strip down there, I'm measuring that to make sure I get the right length. And then I'm taking this zip tie and securing my bow together. So this is what it looks like before it is fluffed. And I've decided I want to add a little burlap to the top. So I'm just making a simple um, two loop bow for the top. You can almost see what I'm doing there.
and I cut the tail short on this one. That one is going to be tied off with a long piece of jute and then I'm going to use that same piece of jute once it's tied down to wrap around the other bows. Did a double knot there so it doesn't come loose. I aggressively fluff my bows, so I want to be sure that I don't pull anything loose in the process. Okay, so around the middle and between the tails with the jute, and going to give that a couple of knots. And then trim off this excess. And I'll use that jute to tie around the pocket that I've made on the bottom after, of course, I fluff my bow. Just gonna dovetail here. Makes the ends look a little bit neater. You can cut it at a slant or whatever you choose to do. What do you think about it so far? Pretty good? Okay, so here I am just tying it on one side and I'm going to use the other side for the flowers. I'm going to trim them off so I don't have too much stem to fold up. It makes a lot of bulk and I don't want that. I chose these colors because they match pretty closely to what's already in the picture. I'm just going to tuck those in there and a little bit of extra greenery. Okay, so now that I know how I want it, I'm going to wire these together. You can use floral wire or you can use um, a zip tie or a little piece of jute cord, whichever one works best for you. See, I changed my mind about that little piece of wire. This just seems to be the easiest for me. Like I said, I have small hands and it's hard for me to grasp a big bunch like that and try to tie it without dropping it and you know it just makes it easier and that's all it is to, is to it I'm just going to tuck it in there and I'm going to use a little floor wire to hold it shut and it is perfectly done I hope you like it I hope you try to do something like this yourself because it was easy and thrifted and inexpensive I'd love for you to subscribe. I have lots more. If you have any comments, please put them below. I'd love to hear input. If you have any suggestions for videos, I'd be happy to look at those and give it a shot. I thank you so much for watching. And for those of you who have stuck around, I appreciate you being part of my YouTube family. See you soon. Bye. Today, we'll be making our own bow maker. Keep watching. You can go ahead and pause here if you'd like and write down your list of materials and go and get your things together. This is easy, beginner stuff. So here is my piece of wood. This is that one by four, 16 inches long. And then I have two dowels and the diameter is the same as the drill bit. These are some things that I got from Dirt Cheap. And there are, I think, back to school section, but it think came probably from the, the dollar spot or bullseye playground originally this is what I'm going to use and they're about a foot long so I've just clipped off the end and I'm going to sand it down you want to be sure that your dowels are smooth on the ends because you don't want it to snag your ribbon once you get it assembled these were tapered on the bottom so I already have a nice smooth edge on one side I'm just going to go ahead and sand those off on my sanding block after that's done, I am taking my measurements for my board. I'm 
there's probably a much easier way to do this, but since I'm new at this sort of thing, I'm just finding my middle point and gonna find placement for both of my drill holes. I figure, you know, measure twice, cut once. Isn't that how it goes? Well, I'll measure twice, drill once. So that's what I'm doing. You want these rods to be spaced out a little bit apart. They don't need to be touching completely. You need to have some room at the bottom and then as they go upward, they will taper where they, the ends touch or almost touch, whichever way you wanna do it. I didn't have anything to, to go by. I've never seen a bow maker in person. I'm just kinda of going off of memory what I used, um, what I saw watching other people's videos when they use it. All right, so I'm gonna drill down, but not all the way through. That's why you see me drilling slowly a little bit so that we still have a solid back. Just gonna knock that sawdust out, use my sand and block to smooth it a little, and then it's a perfect fit. So they fit in there and they stand up straight even without any glue so far. All right, so then I'm gonna take my wood glue, I believe this is Elmer's, and just put down in both of those holes. And I'm just gonna take another little stick that I have over here and swirl it around so that it's touching the sides and the bottom and just clean it up a little bit. You'd wanna do a better job cleaning than I did if you decide that you wanna paint this so it doesn't interfere with your paint job, but I'm not gonna paint mine. Then I'm just gonna seat those back down with my little tapered edges on the top. Get them where I want them, and you can see here that I'm pushing them kind of toward each other. You can see that they're closer on the top than they are on the bottom. You can use a clamp to hold them there if you want to until they dry, but that's up to you how you wanna do it. And some of the glue does come out when you push the rods down in there, so I've just cleaned that up. And I think it says um, it takes about 30 minutes for the glue to dry, but to set up completely, wait for 24 hours. I wanted to go ahead and get this project finished, so I went ahead and did it all back to back, all my steps back to back. So now I'm just erasing off my pencil marks that I had on there before. And by the way, I did sand off that board that it's attached to, that one by four that was sanded to. I did that with a um, sanding block from Dollar Tree. Now I'm making one inch marks. I'm gonna do this down both sides. It's a 16 inch long board, so I'm going to have marks almost all the way to the bottom. But since my board wasn't exactly 16 inches, I had a little bit extra there little extra dead space you can see that and I'm gonna do something to personalize it in just a moment so be sure that you stay tuned so you can see that Okay, so there's extra on the end. I'm just marking that off. Then I started with this fine tip Sharpie. Uh, it was not giving me the dark line that I wanted. For one thing, it was almost out of ink. And secondly, it's just not, you know, I need glasses. So it's not something that I could, I like to quickly get my crafts done and I don't want to have to be squinting and bending around and getting in my camera shot when I'm trying to make my bows. So. I'm gonna go back over that in just a moment with a, it's actually a glass marker that came from Dollar Tree, but it has a nice tip, so it gives it a better look. And there is that marker. These are inch lines 
when you make your bows, you can make your loops by inches and make the tails by the inches by just laying them against the board and it makes it, it, makes it a lot quicker. Then I'm just going to write in making it my own because that's my channel name. You can put whatever you want to. If you have leftover, if you cut your board exactly the right length, then you won't have to, you won't have this dead space like I did. But I was using a scrap that I already had from some things that my husband had made for me. So I went ahead and used it. So you might be wondering, why do I need a bow maker? You might not need a bow maker, but if you have small hands, if you have neuropathy, if you have arthritis, something like this might be the answer for you. So you can still get those pretty fluffy structured bows without putting yourself in a lot of pain or becoming uncomfortable because then if you're in pain you can't finish your project and you know that's no good so I thought about this when I was watching Olivia from Olivia's Romantic Home she has a wonderful crafting channel and she does all kinds of amazing things and she said that she has neuropathy and so that is what she uses her bow maker for and I thought well they're not very expensive. You can buy your own if you don't want to make it. I think, I think that they're probably under $20, but for me, I thought, you know, I probably have the stuff around. I can do this myself. And I did, and you can see here that it is, it's working. I'm going to show you how to make the bow. And since it's Halloween crafting time, I happen to have my Halloween ribbon handy, so just use whatever you have to make your bow. I'm just gonna show you an example of a really simple bow here. And I'm just making loops. I use my measurements. I think I have maybe five inch loops on each side so you can get your bow loops even and you can get your tails even. And then I'm just gonna cut that off. This particular ribbon is a wired ribbon. I was gonna use two wired ribbons to show you an example, but I decided let's try it with an unwired ribbon and see how it works with that. So this top ribbon doesn't have any wire in it, but I wanted to see how it would do. And this one is four inch loops on this black and white um, chevron. I used four inch loops. So you can stack your bows. You can have them the same length or you can have them a little bit smaller so you can see the detail of the bow that's underneath. And that's what I wanted to do here. You can see my son chit chatting with me while I'm crafting. That is a common occurrence in my home for my kids to be down there with me in the basement in my little craft corner. Then I'm gonna take this pipe cleaner and just twist it together to hold it while I take it off so everything stays right where it should. Okay, so then there is my bow. Very first bow I made with my bow maker. I'm just gonna twist that around to the back so that will be the back of my bow now. I'm gonna fluff it out and then in just a minute, you'll see me dovetail the ends of my bow, and then it's ready to go for whatever project I want to put it on. This was easy, and I really feel like this is something that you could do on your own. You can, you know, if you know somebody who has a drill who might help you, it's something that you could probably do on your own, and you may even have the materials already at home in your stash that you can use to make one. And it's the perfect time to do it because Christmas is coming and you got to have those gorgeous bows on everything. Yeah, why don't you give it a try? I would love to hear if you're going to try it and if you do, how it turned out for you. I hope you enjoyed. Thanks for watching. Bye. Today we'll make a swag with many trees and a yard sign from Dollar Tree. Keep watching. I'm going to start off with this. Christmas tree that actually I used as a Halloween tree. It's two of them combined. I got those from Dollar Tree. I've taken off all of the Halloween ornaments and now I'm going to remove the stand. I'll be sure to link that video so you can see how I put these together. I'm going to cut off the 
zip ties that are on there and I have three holding those trees together. I find these flat pliers get the job done really well. They can get down into places, get really close to the surface to cut those off. So I'm going to take the two trees apart and in all the places where I have pieces of glitter and little remnants from the table scatter from before. I'm just going to go ahead and cut that off. You'll never know once we get working on this little swag. If you want to use the green or can only find the green, that will certainly work too. I'm going to leave those flat on one side and then pull everything up and to the sides. You're going to use your tree that you use for Halloween. Just be sure that you remove all of the black and orange because it's not going to really go with our theme for winter and Christmas. Make sure that your branches are straight because with a pine tree, the branches are straight. Evergreen trees, I guess you could say. So if you wanted to do a teardrop swag, you would layer them this way. But we are going to do the swag that has greenery on both sides. Just going to trim those up so they're even. And we have to bind them in the middle. So we're going to take zip ties and connect here and here and then you're going to clip off the extra Okay, after we have that the way we want it, we're going to take this yard sign from Dollar Tree and we're going to take the, the sign stand off the back or the pick off the back. They come off fairly easily. Then we're going to start taking the branches. These are from some picks from Dollar Tree from last year. I'm going to pull them apart. You can use whatever type that you like. Some of these pieces are longer than the other ones. And I'm going to use my longest pieces in the center. Ideally, those would slip right in between those two poles there, like the other side did, but it's not doing that, and that's okay. We can still make that work. Then I'm going to place some shorter branches next to those, trying to keep that shape there. You can push those back and pull some of the white branches out to give it a more snowy look, which is appropriate, I think, for our snowman. I'm just going to keep doing that until you get it looking the way that you want to. Now, here is an option for you. If you would like to use some ribbon, you can cut some ribbon to make some little tails to put wherever you want in your swag. On the ends, on the bottom, you'll see in just a moment how you could possibly use those. I always dovetail the ends. So that's what you see me doing now. This is wired ribbon, and both of these came from Dollar General. 
and they were one dollar and two dollars I believe so just pinch them in the middle then you can take a piece of pipe cleaner or a piece of string right in the center and just tie it just a double knot nothing fancy there pipe cleaner a piece of jute whatever you want to use and so you make these almost looks like wings the little tails is all you would have and then you can place them wherever you like but for me I'm going to put those to the side because I think I'm gonna go with something else now these berries came off the same pick as the pine and I'm just gonna pull those apart and start placing those in as well I'm gonna use this floral foam block to put in the center I'm going to start off with some hot glue and press it down. Then I'm going to take this floral tape and wrap it around. I wasn't exactly sure how I wanted to secure this, but this will work until the glue dries. And it's also something that you can puncture through when you're adding more florals to it, rather than using ribbon or something that you can't poke through. So this will work. And this is the base for our snowman's head. A little more security here with those pipe cleaners. I'm going to add some hot glue and a pipe cleaner and a little piece of scrap paper on there so that we can attach this to the block. Those foam blocks will sometimes shed and your items will fall straight off of it. So you need to secure it a little bit better and this way it wraps all the way around the base of that swag. Now I'm just extending out the form by pulling those white branches upward and I'm going to add some picks that I have cut down to make them a little bit shorter to go on the top. And you can do the same thing with the berries here. Then I go in the bottom and add a few pieces there. I'm just poking those right into that floral foam. And again, you want to put some toward the back, some a little more toward the front, and kind of incorporate them into that white. It gives it some depth. Trim down where you need to. I think he's looking cute. I'd like to do, I think, a little mini tree to go with this. What do you think? Yay or nay? Should we do a let it snow tree to match this? Okay, so if you want to add ribbon, this is how you would do it. And you would want to do it on both sides. And I have decided to make a bow to go underneath my snowman's head to look a little bit like maybe like a bow tie or a scarf, something like that. It's the black and white, looks really good. It's kind of winter wonderland, kind of woodsy. I'm just going to tie that right in the middle with some jute twine. I used one piece of ribbon to do that. No, it wasn't easy to see me tie it. I just made a loop and then pushed it up against itself and that's where I got the tails. I'm going to fold the ends under about a quarter of an inch and I want to make a little pom-pom fringe to go on there so this is almost what's left of what I had from Goodwill some fringe I've had for a long time and I'm gonna add this on the back of that ribbon so that you don't see that white cording on the top 
want to do that on both sides. And then once you press that down, just be sure you don't have anything extending the edges because you want it to look nice and finished. So I'm just folding that in a little bit so it's not frayed looking. I'm going to add some glue to the string and a little piece of paper there to hold it in place. Trim it down, flip it over, and then fix my bow because I had it backwards. Just flip it over and fluff it out a little bit. And definitely if it bothers you that the print is upside down, then you can ensure that it is right side up or you can use something that doesn't have any print on it that's just a pattern. I think maybe the plaid would be really cute here. They have some plaid wire ribbon at Dollar Tree. That would probably be really cute. And I think that turned out cute. I wanted to do a little bit extra here on his hat and I had some holly picks left over from Dollar Tree that I've been using a little bit at a time. I'm just going to place those down on top of the original areas on his hat. And then I've pulled three berries off of the little berry picks and I'm going to add those on there as well. Careful not to burn yourself here. I looked high and low and they did not have any of these picks at my store this year. But these were very nice picks. They were on a long stem. So if you had any left from last year, this is a great project to use this for, I think. I'm just taking this little white marker. I don't think there's anything special about it. It doesn't even have a label on it. And I'm just going over the edges to kind of give it a, a little frosted look. Dollar Tree does make the holly picks that have the like a cream colored edge around the leaves. So you could certainly use that if you wanted, but I like the green better for this project. Then I'm going to take a raffia bow that came off of something else I've done and just glue that right in the center to give it a little, little more rustic vibe. And I think one more holly leaf and berry right here will do the trick. I was really surprised at how well this turned out. It's exceeded my expectations for sure. What do you think? And this is definitely something that could be used beyond Christmas and on till, you know, until spring came. I think it's a nice little winter piece. Thanks for stopping by. Welcome to all my newcomers. I hope you have a joyful day and I'll see y'all real soon. Bye. A festive Christmas sign with Dollar Tree calendar. Keep watching. Dollar Tree has an array of beautiful calendars with lots of farmhouse and rustic designs. In this calendar, we're going to use the December picture. This is simply blessed. And then I'm going to use this Dollar Tree sign. It's just something that was from Christmas. It's a square. So here are my ideas of some embellishments for this sign. I've got some picks, some pine cones and berries. You can use whatever you want, but I think these reflect what's in that picture, so I think they'll make a good fit. I'm going to remove this 
hanger from the sign. It's just jute and it's got a little plastic backing. You can just press that through. You can use it again if you want. Then I just started to peel this off because you could see where it was overlapped, but it did not come off very nicely. So yeah, I didn't fool with that for too much. I'm gonna take off this little, I think it's a sun and we'll save it for later. So you see it's almost a perfect fit. I'm gonna go ahead and tear off, keeping that edge as clean as possible. You can cut it if you want. And then I'm just going to fit it over here. I've decided since the page is white to go ahead and use the back so that you don't see all of that design through. I'm gonna take a pen or a pencil, whichever one, and trim it out. We're gonna cut that excess off. Be sure that you use the back of it because you don't wanna see any ink on the front of your picture. I'm gonna use a trusty old glue stick and just give a nice even coat of that glue stick all over the back. You can see I've got a very nice coverage there. Done it this way so I don't have to put any on that paper. You can use the Jot glue stick to get it Dollar Tree if you'd like. I use it often. This is just one I had on hand nearby. Okay, so I've got it centered and I'm just going to press it out, make sure there's no bubbles or wrinkles. And then using my wooden ruler, I'm just rubbing it across there to make sure that everything is nicely stuck down to that sign in the back. The hole in the top where it hangs, you could just take a paint pen or a chalk pen or chalk marker and just fill that in if you'd like. And I did have to do that more than one time because it that particular pen I used was not very good. Using my sanding foam block from Dollar Tree, I'm going around my edges to give it a nice finished look. It's not a very long process and it is a very satisfying process. It slowed it down a little bit so you can see what happens here. It just shears it right off the edge. And then the sign, if you have the glue all the way over to the edges, the sign is going to look like it was made this way. You'll never know that it was a DIY. Just a very nicely comes right off. You certainly don't have to use, do this step if you don't want to, but just be sure that you've glued your edges down so that it won't peel up if you choose not to do it. And the good thing about a glue stick is you don't have to wait for anything to dry. All right, two options for bows here. This is the one I started with. Rather than editing it out, I thought you might like to see what your options could be. So I've got three different ones here. I've got the bow maker tool that I made. I'll link that video for you. And then I'm just going to measure out my tails and they are about eight inches long. And begin making some loops. You loop the fabric over or the ribbon over and you just pull it down in between the two dowels. If you have a bow maker, if you've purchased a bow maker, then you're probably already familiar with how to make a, I, I'm just gonna call it a rather simple bow. We're going to do three stacks of two loop bows Well, I guess it would be one stack with three two loop bows. There we go. So I'm just showing you this in slow motion in case you haven't used it yet and you're still getting used to how to do it. And I've got a little closer look for you here. You choose your next ribbon to go on top. And when you have a ribbon that has two sides that are the same, you don't have to flip it in the middle, but you do need to twist it if you have a printed side and a non-printed side. So that's what I've done here. You just pinch it and twist it in the middle so that your pretty side is up. And then trim it off. And then we're gonna do the same thing for that checkered ribbon. Each one of these bows 
is a little bit smaller going toward the top. So there's a five inch bow, a four inch bow, and a three inch bow. The three inch bow is on the top and the five is on the bottom. Grab it in the middle, pull it off, and then get your pipe cleaner or your chenille stem, your wire, whatever you want to use, and you're going to twist it while you hold it tightly in the center. You want to twist it tightly so you can fluff your bow out. So when I did this, <clears throat> I decided that it was a little too much for what I wanted on this simple, simple sign. So I've decided to take it apart and do something that's a little more simple. So if you don't have a bow maker, here's an option. I saw this bow on Olivia's romantic home and she calls it the Olivia bow. I've just made this bow, I folded it over on itself. You don't have to twist anything so that there will be two loops on either side. Then you fold it, get your center and make tiny cuts in the outside. I'm just pretty much going through the wire and just a tiny, tiny bit of that fabric. Then I'm gonna twist it up with this wire until I can get the next layer ready. I'm gonna do the same thing with this. These are wired ribbons. Flip this over and then one more time. There's two here and two here. So I'm gonna find the center and put that loose end on the outside. I don't know that it makes a difference, but I put it there. And then notch the sides again. So now we're gonna stack these two together. Press the wire right into the little notches. And then you wanna twist it tightly in the back and then start to pull your bows and twist. Pull and twist. Just pull on that little tail out there too. Pull and twist. This, I loved making this bow and I will definitely be making more like this. So if you're a fan of Olivia's, go over to Olivia's Romantic Home and she'll show you how to make all kinds of cool things. Okay, that little tail was just a little bit too short, so I just snipped it straight across to kind of hide it. And then it's kind of raggedy on the end here, so I'm going to make a little dovetail. And always, of course, finishing off the ribbon tails with the dovetail or slant, just as long as you don't have a frayed edge there. I want to put this in the corner. Now I have to make some tails. I'm going to do that with both of these. I'm just pretty much folding it in half and then pressing it to the side, pulling it to the side just a little bit, dovetailing it. So you can see how those are made. Pretty easy. I'm going to put them together with a little bit of hot glue. I put the, the checkered part on top since the checker is on the top of the other bow, but it doesn't really matter. It's just my preference. And I'm going to attach that and kind of make a little run through of how I want things to be on the back there. I take some hot glue, put it up in the corner so that it is not obstructing my good tidying sign. Give it just a second to sit up before you start pulling on it. Then you're going to add some glue and start placing down the, the picks or the cones or whatever type of greenery you have that you want to put there. You can get these little pine cones at Dollar Tree in a bag. I think they are in the floral section, but they may be with the Christmas stuff. It probably just depends on your store. The polka dot ribbon came from Dollar Tree. The plaid ribbon came from the thrift store. The two little picks that are on the sides came from the Target um, Bullseye Playground last year, but I actually got them at Dirt Cheap. And fluff that bow. 
Okay, so I wanted to put a little something extra here in the top, and I'm adding one more of those little pits there. Now we gotta make our hanger. So I'm just cutting a piece of jute, and I'm going to glue it into the original holes in the back with a little piece of scrap ribbon to hold that in place. And there we have it. This is our first Christmas wreath, our first Christmas sign or decoration for the holiday season. I will be having a Christmas 2020 series, so be sure that you subscribe and stay tuned to that. I appreciate you stopping by, and I will see you again real soon. Bye. I'm gonna show you two ways to dress up the Dollar Tree candy cane. Keep watching. So we're gonna be working with the smaller tinsel covered piece of decor candy cane. This is not the actual metal frame that you can get, but there is a metal, a metal one too that's larger than this. You could do it the same way, pretty much, as far as wrapping and such. But we're going to use the smaller one today. I'm going to try to keep this tinsel intact uh, as much as I can because I can use this again on another project or since my children like to craft, I can give them all the little bits and pieces to do their own crafts. So we'll really be stretching the dollar there. Just going to cut one piece in the white and one piece in the red and start unwinding. They're wrapped around these little nubs that stick out. Don't worry about those. We're going to Got a solution for that shortly as well because we are not going to be using the same winding method with our ribbon. So there we go. Lots of sturdy tinsel. I'm going to take my bull nose pliers and just start cutting off these little pieces. Now the reason to the remove these is that I'm going to be using sheer ribbon on one option and then I'm going to be using a yarn on the other option and I don't want it to snag anywhere and poke holes in there so we want to have a smooth surface. We're going to start with this red and silver cane and I'm going to take this wired ribbon and wrap around starting by just tucking it into the bottom and then start wrapping it around the outside of the candy cane all the way up and around. There is going to be a spot on the bottom of the candy cane and on the top back side that need to be patched but I'm going to show you how to fix that where it looks fairly seamless. Definitely not per perfect, but you know, it would be okay if you wanted to use it on a glass door, for instance. It would be neat enough on the back that it wouldn't be a problem, I think. This ribbon option was much easier than the yarn that I'll show you in just a minute. So I guess you could say that this will be more of a, I wouldn't necessarily say traditional, but maybe modern option. And then we'll do a rustic or farmhouse option in just a moment. So be sure that you hang out with me a little bit longer and I'll show you. All right, I'm gonna use a little hot glue. Careful, careful, this is sheer and it is very thin. You will burn yourself if you are not very, very careful. So I'm just using my scissors to help me hold it because I've dropped my spatula on the floor somewhere. All right, so we wanna neaten up the end and cover up where we tucked it in. I'm just gonna use a tad of glue there and then I'm gonna make a little patch for it. You certainly can skip this part if you're not gonna be putting it where the backside will be seen. And if, obviously, if you're not going to be selling it, then it doesn't matter. If you use it in your own home, it doesn't bother you. It's fine the way it was. But see, this option makes it a little bit neater. Then we're gonna work on the top. Same process here. You just wanna try to, to cut a piece that will cover that spot and just neatly tack it down with the glue. to close it off and that makes it a little bit better. So there we go. 
I'm going to show you a couple of options here. First one is the original bow and snowflake from the original ornament, or you can make your own. This bow that I'm going to show you is called the funky bow. You're going to cut 12 inch strips, three of each of these colors, and this ribbon came from the wedding section of the Dollar Tree. Be sure you look all around the store when you're looking for your, your ribbon and your tools and things like that because they could be in a variety of places. There's not as much on these rolls, maybe three yards on these rolls, so not as good of a value for your dollar, but you know, still nice, still a good value I think for a dollar. So we're going to take these and stack them together. You can stack them randomly. You can stack them like I did with the white together and the silver. It really doesn't matter. You're going to pinch them right in the middle and wrap a piece of floral wire around it. Then you're going to fluff out the ears or the top pieces. That's going to be the top of your bow. Always use the wired ribbon if you want it to stand out in these bigger bows. And then you're going to start pulling the tails that were on the bottom up on the sides. To me, this bow kind of looks like a flower. So you had a bunch of petals on the top and the little leaves spread out around it on the top. And you just pull it out and around to get it the shape that you like. Same thing with the top. And then you can start making some dovetails in your ribbon if you like or whichever whichever way you want to do it. You can hot glue this down or you can wire it down. But for me, since I'm going to show you another option with this same candy cane, just giving you an idea. Okay, this one's a little more complicated, takes a little more time. First off, you're going to need to tie a knot and then you're going to wrap it toward the underside where it's concave. Then you're going to take the rest of that and wrap it, weave it through the bottom because you want to cover up your red frame. You can certainly take this outside, spray paint it if you want to so that nothing shows. But I'm going to show you what to do if you don't have spray paint because a lot of people don't have spray paint. You don't have to use this thick yarn that I have. This came from Goodwill and it had no label on it so I'm not sure where it originally came from. You can either get thick ribbon or you can use Dollar Tree options like the cotton rope or some of the, um, I don't know if it's a burlap rope or jute rope, something like that. They do have some options and you can use that. Even if you wanted to be really wacky and whimsical about it, you could use some of the clothesline rope which comes in a variety of colors and it's nylon and you can use that. But I've got the end finished there and I'm going to start wrapping my yarn around it. Keep those rows close together as you can and then use a little bit of hot glue to tack them together. You just press them down. Give them just a second for the glue to set up. And then anytime you see a little bit of space, just go ahead and put you another dot of glue. It doesn't take a lot. Just little dots here and there. And then continue to wind it around the cane. And you're going to do that until you get to the top of that straight piece. I'll wrap a little bit and then push the rows together. And that's when you want to add your glue in between. You could probably do maybe a nautical candy cane option if you like that the beachy look at Christmas time. That would be cute too, but this makes a good, I think, farmhouse or rustic look. Country, some people have like a country thing. You're going to need a little more glue around the curves. 
I don't want to get it too bulky in the center here. So I'm going to cut it off, add a little hot glue and put the clip on the back to let it sit up for a moment while I work on the end of the candy cane. So we're going to do this end the same way we did the other one. I'm going to tie a knot, put it toward the inside, and then start wrapping the bottom. Get that close together so you don't have any gaps where the red frame is going to show. And maybe it wouldn't bother you, you know, if it's showing, but it would drive me nuts. I know myself well enough. And then you're going to stuff it on the inside, put a little bit of glue on there, whatever you need to do to make it stay. Now I'm adding my yarn rope back on there and I'm going to do the same thing as before, get to glue it down to the bottom, the first row. And then start the winding again. If I knew ahead of time all the ingredients you would need for what we're making on these crafts, I would definitely post that ahead of time for you. But most of the time, I don't get my ideas that way. I'll have some inspiration, I'll get an idea, and then I don't really know what I'm going to be using completely until I am doing it. So I don't make a good list in the beginning. And I do apologize for that if your your mind works that way and, and I'm not helping you with that. Okay, here we go. We're wrapping back and forth now to get around the center. It's going to get a little bit bulky there in the center. But that's where we're going to put our bow. So that really won't matter. See there how it's got kind of a thicker spot in the center? There's a little gap in there where we will tie our bow. I wanted to use this really pretty Dollar General ribbon. It is wired. I believe it's a two inch ribbon and it's got the red truck on it. I'm going to make a loop of this. This is, I think about a 10 inch loop. It's a 10 inch piece of ribbon. It's gonna be smaller than that once you glue it. You're just gonna make a loop. And while you're letting that dry, you're going to take another piece of ribbon that's going to be the tails. And I saw Caitlin from Crest by Caitlin do a bow similar to this, and it's so simple. I'm going to use a piece of jute in the center and tie it off. And so honestly, there's no way to really even explain to you how to do this bow because you just saw me do it. It was that easy. I'm going to make sure that my bow, that the knot is in the center and I'm going to make a double knot. Then I'm going to dovetail the ends. And I'm going to string one piece of that jute through the middle and then tie it down. And that's simple. Simple enough, right? Okay. You can trim off your pieces of jute there and fluff the bow. We're going to add one more thing on here. Some of these bells. I got these from Dirt Cheap and I have no idea where they originally came from. But you can get these anywhere pretty much in the Christmas sections. These look like they're tarnished and old so I really like that about them. I think it gives a good rustic look. I'm just doing double knots and a touch of glue there so they don't slip out. Then I'm going to wrap it around the center of the bow and let them hang down. And that is that. Now if you want a hanger, you can use a piece of this stem. Make your loop. Close the end. A little hot glue, a little paper paper band-aid there and you are good to go. So those are your two options. I use the same candy cane to do both of them. So the final result is this one, which is the rustic farmhouse look, which is what I enjoy in my home. I certainly hope you enjoyed it. Which one did you like best?
Thanks for stopping by. I'll see you again soon. Bye. Can you believe we're making these projects from gift bags and gift boxes from Dollar Tree? Keep watching. Okay, DIY number one is going to be made with a Dollar Tree gift bag. They have a gorgeous variety of red truck and rustic looking bags for you to choose from. So you're going to pick some ribbons, you're going to choose your bag. And then my sign here is something that I got from Dirt Cheap. I paid a dollar for it. Can you believe it? A dollar. I'm going to use my yardstick and show you that this is a 16 inch square. So you're going to need something about that size to put your bag on. All right, these handles will just feed back through. They have a little plasticky thing on them. We're going to repurpose one of those handles, so you're going to keep that for later. And also use that little tag for something else. I'm cutting off a plastic hanger, and then I'm going to begin cutting out my picture. Guys, it's the little red truck. Uh-huh. Look at that. The color is gorgeous. There's no glitter on this bag. Take the little extra piece off up there. We're not going to need that. And then I'm going to measure and trim out where I need to cut it. Just using a pencil. Take off the edges. We want this to fit from side to side. There is going to be room on the top and the bottom. And that is all right with me because I have a solution for that. I got a pile of these beautiful bags. They are different. Oh, they're so pretty. I'm going to be doing more projects with these. So thumbs up and comment below if you would like to see more projects done with these bags. You're not going to believe how this, this turns out. I'm going to take a ribbon that has no wire, put it across the top edge and the bottom edge. Instead of having a frayed edge poking out there, I've made it long enough so that it will overlap and we can put it on the back side. By the way, this picture, I have one with the tree side, just like this, hanging in my bedroom. I think I got four of these. So lots of options, especially for the price. You cannot be price. I mean, a dollar. Yeah. I think the board originally came from Target. It did. But I got it at dirt cheap. Now using the glue stick, which is a clean option, which was getting a little chunky on me there. Wanted to show you. Not a problem. We're just going to press it down and keep moving. Be sure that you get all the way out to the edges so that you don't have any peeling once you get your project down on your press it down you don't want any air under there and I'm using my wooden ruler to make sure that it is pressed all the way down now the holes at the top where the handles were we're just going to take a white metallic marker or a blue or a <laughs> a chalk marker there we go and you're just going to fill in those little holes so i'm using my sanding block from dollar tree and taking the edges off this gives it a nice smooth edge and finish and i'm going to do the same thing on the other side And I didn't wait until the glue was dry. I went right ahead and did this. Excuse my Halloween shirt. I'm doing these videos a little early for you guys so you can get everything you need to make these before 
the items disappear from the store. Because if you shop Dollar Tree, you know how it goes. Better get it while it's there. Okay. So just in case I've not knocked anything loose with all that, I went ahead and pressed it back down. I'm going to take another piece of ribbon to put over the edge. And this is one of those lace ribbons. This is not in the holiday sections. It's in the regular crafting section. And the green and white polka dot ribbon was actually thrifted. Would you use anything you like? I think Dollar Tree has a red plaid ribbon that might be pretty for this as well. And you don't have to have a wired ribbon, but you certainly can use one. I'm going to center this between the ribbon and the border of the picture and just use a couple of little dots of hot glue to put it down, leaving those ends a little bit long so that I can wrap them around the back for a nice clean finish. Same thing on the bottom. This ribbon has a slight curve. Um, I don't know if all of them do or if it was just the, the spool that I picked, but it does have a slight curve, but that's not a problem. It's cotton and you can just manipulate it down into the position that you need it to be in. trim off any extra that you have. Now it's time for my wooden stickers. And they do have a little plastic on the back that you peel off before you put them down. When I bought these, I saw that there was a chipped piece here. It was still hanging on by the fibers of the wood. I went ahead and tried to patch that with a chalk marker. And it did help with the little disruption in the color there but I do go black, back and hot glue it. Now you gotta find the positioning here where you want your letters to be. This pack came from Target last year and I got it from Dirt Cheap. You can use any type of sticker that you want to use. Since this is kind of a large sign though, you are going to need um, larger letters just to balance it. If you're good with hand lettering or painting, you can certainly do that here. So I didn't measure out to get the exact center of this because that's really not something that I wanted to do this time. I'm just kind of eyeballing it and putting it down. And the ribbon there on the bottom does give me a little wiggle room. I can. I can see my line there, so it's fairly straight. It's just probably not centered in the board, but that's okay. I like it anyway. All right. And you got more of the same here. Those were the easy pieces. Now time for the little, a bit more complicated to get these pieces down. That is not a problem. I would never ever be um, comfortable enough to just peel those off and stick them down randomly. I just, there's no way. But if you put them down on there first, you can get an idea of where you want them to be. So I call this a dry run. Kind of see how I want them spaced and then get them where I want them to be. So that's what you see here. So these little wood stickers also have the same adhesive on the back, little sticker backing. I'm just going to peel them off and try to put them back in the same spot that I found them. Luckily, one of those bag handle holes was covered by the welcome sign. But I couldn't quite get it spaced where it would cover up the second one. 
but it's no big deal. We don't sweat the small stuff here, do we? And again, don't worry if you don't have the stickers. Use whatever stickers you have. I think it's pretty with the different fonts, though. I really like that, how that turned out. Okay, so you see where it's broken on the bottom? I'm just going to use a little bit of hot glue and just patch it. Not a problem. I'm not going to stress. I'm not going to throw it away and start over. Nope. I'm going to use a little stick, put a dot of glue on it, and I'm going to patch it up. And hold it in place for a moment until it is set up like it should be. There you have it. Guys, this was made from a bag. A bag. A Dollar Tree bag. Is this not the most super high-end looking sign of a red truck that you have ever seen? I'm telling you, you could definitely go to Hobby Lobby and spend possibly $39, $40 on a sign this size with this much detail going on in it. We did it for just a few dollars. Yep, we sure did. We sure did. So we need to hang this thing. I'm going to use the handle that was already on the bag. And I am going to use this tag. Cut this down. This is going to be the paper that I use to patch over where I put my glue. Gluing it down. And the paper on top of the glue just secures it down so that it, nothing, nothing moves. Everything stays right where it needs to be. We're going to do the same thing on the side. I know that it's not level on the back, but it will hang fine. There you go. Just cleaning up my little glue that's squished out. Now, on to DIY number two, which is the Dollar Tree gift box. They have lots of these too. This was in a three pack. This is probably medium size. So we're going to deck the halls with this and this thrifted frame. We're going to take it apart, give that glass a good cleaning with some alcohol, let it dry, take the paper back off of the frame and set it aside. We're going to take this Rust-Oleum Universal Satin Apple Grid Paint. Take this frame outside, spray it with two coats and let it dry. All right, my glass is clean. I'm gonna lay it on top of the box and get the sizing right for my framed artwork. So there we, we got the edges there. Carefully cut this out so that you can save the edging for a different project. We're crafters, we just don't throw stuff away. Not like normal people do, right? We're gonna save it. The edging doesn't have to be exactly perfect on this. It's gonna be in a frame, so you won't see if you have little jags here and there. All right, so this is what I mean. This is the trim that I had off of the boxes. Look at all that extra stuff you could use on other projects. Set that aside. We might need it for another project at another point. So our frame is dry and we've brought it back in. I'm gonna put some glue on the paper backing of the frame and we're gonna just reassemble it. I'm going to put the glass back in and then we're going to lay the picture that we cut from the box right down in there and secure it with those tabs. And we have a standing piece of art that is framed. Isn't that nice? I love the way the red frame looks with the red poinsettias. 
Thanks so much for stopping by and watching my video and crafting with me. I hope you come back and I'll see you again soon. Bye. Today we'll make this Christmas sign from a Dollar Tree bag. Keep watching. You're going to start off with two ribbons that you like, whatever coordinates. So I've got the blue and the burlap. One is thrifted and one is from Dollar Tree. You can choose ornaments or berries. When I start off, I don't know exactly which direction I'm going in, so I like to give myself some options to see what feels right. You're going to take some picks. A bag from Dollar Tree, and this is from this year in the Christmas section. And then I'm using a thrifted chalkboard sign, and this is a 12 by 16 sign. You are going to start off by taking your scissors and cutting down the edge of the bag. I'm going to go ahead and start off with the flat side. You can certainly save the back side for another project, but this way we don't have to iron anything out or worry about that folded seam. So just go ahead all the way around the bag and cut that out as neatly as possible. Remove the string handle from the bag can just push it through and then we're going to be saving this and cutting it into strips to finish it off. I'm just measuring the bag from the top onto the board underneath to see where I need to, to trim. I'm going to take my glue stick and just apply it all over the back of the board. If you get some little chunks, and that does happen, if you can see there in the top left, you can just run back over that and smooth it out. Can't beat that. One dollar for eight glue sticks? Yeah, that's at the Dollar Tree. All right, I'm going to turn my sign upside down and place it onto my bag. Press it down good with my hands, just feeling for any areas underneath that are raised that need to be smoothed out. Then I'm going to take my wooden ruler and just get a nice clean finish. Pressing everything down so that all of that bag adheres to all of that sign. You take your scissors and trim along the edges to get a little bit closer, but you don't have to be too close because we're going to use that foam sanding block from Dollar Tree to give us a nice finished edge. You're going to sand downward and away at an angle. This is going to give it an aged look and that's kind of what you strive for when you are doing rustic or rustic um, decor, rustic DIYs. You want to give it a little bit of an aged look, make it sort of like it has a little bit of history or it's weathered. So you're going to do that all the way around. And the bag is thicker than regular paper, so I wasn't really sure how this would work on the, the bag. Um, but it works, it works very well, actually, very well. So there you go. There's my nice little finished edges. They have that little bleached or whitewashed look. Then I'm going to take this piece that I cut off the side of the bag, trim it down, and cut it in half, use one strip for the top. I will use the glue stick to put it down and then I will sand it down to get the edges even just like I did around the original picture. And the reason I'm doing this is because I like the buffalo check print and I have it on the sides, but because of the length of the sign, I couldn't get all of that on the bag. Plus there were holes where the handles were originally on the bag. So now if I do it this way, it looks like a nice trimmed out sign. Just pressing that down. 
and there you have it. That's all you have to do for the top and you're going to do the bottom the same way. Next we're going to work on our bow. This is sort of a cotton ribbon that's wired but it's to me it reminds me of denim or jeans but it's thin enough to work with. I'm going to make a little stacked bow here. So the bottom layer is going to be about an inch bigger than the middle layer and then the top layer is going to be an inch smaller than the next one. So you can just decide how you want to do that. If you want to do a seven, six, and five inch bow um, loop, or if you want to do a six, five, and four, whichever way you want to do it. I have to say though, in my opinion, if you get any smaller than a five inch on the top, it's kind of hard to work with. Once you fluff it, there's just not a lot of space there. So I'm going to protect my fingers and I'm going to put a little strip of glue and then start gluing down my layers. Just double checking, you can see how the bottom layer is longer and then the top one is even shorter. Be really careful with this wired burlap. It's nice to work with, but you the, it, the glue goes straight through it. So you'll, you'll definitely burn yourself if you're not super careful. All right, I'm just going to put my layers together here and walk my fingers toward themselves and get out my little zip tie from Dollar Tree. You can get big bags of those. And I'm going to tighten that up in the middle. And then trim off the excess. Now we need to go over the center of that. So I've just taken a little strip and folded it over on itself and hot glued it down. And it covers up the hardware. So now we're going to move on to the tails of this bow. And I want those to look stacked as well. Now we're going to dovetail them. Fold them in half and then cut upwards to make little V's. Keeping the pretty side up, you're just going to kind of squish them in the middle. Fold them over and squish them in the middle. Put the hot glue where you need to put it. There was my son stopping by for a little visit. He's decided that maybe he'll try his hand at some crafting too. So now you're just going to put some glue on there and put your tails onto your bow. Now I like the way this looks with the tails kind of out to the side, but you can definitely have them hanging straight down if you'd like. I didn't want it to obstruct the antlers on my deer, so I figured side to side would be a little bit more appropriate for this project. You can use a clamp to hold that in place if you want to until you know that the glue is cool to touch and dry. Now you decide where you want to put your bow. I have a tendency to put everything on the sides. So I've decided to shake it up a little bit today and put it in the center. I think these white snowy picks came from Hobby Lobby on clearance last year, but I'm not 100% sure with that. You can find something similar to it, or similar enough, that looks kind of woodland themed at Dollar Tree. They have really good florals. So I'm going to try to get my bow in the center, and then I have this snowy pick that came from the at-home store last year on clearance after the holidays. And I'm just going to tear it into pieces and place it here and there. I decided to use some snowy pieces because of the snowflakes in the picture. So I figured it was showing us a snowy scenery, so I thought that these pieces would be appropriate for that. And they give me that woodland vibe. You can kind of work with that bow now, or you can wait and do that later. So 
I see here that where I've placed the tails, it's a little bit too long on the side, so I'm just going to trim it up. And that's okay too. You know, take a good look at it, see what you think. You can always cut a little more off, but it's really hard to add something back. So just go ahead and do what is pleasing to your eye. I try not to show y'all every bit of my thought processes because it's it's a lot going on with the, the options and the choices and I try to edit that down where you don't have you don't have to look at too much of it. So I have this little snowman not snowman, it's a snowflake ornament that looks like it's wooden and it has some frosting on that. And that actually came in a big bag of I don't know what you would call it. Uh, I had pine cones and branches and just, I don't know, that you know the bags that you get. They're fragrant. It's like a potpourri bag, but they're really big. It's like gallon size. I got that for 90% off last year at Hobby Lobby. And they're still extremely fragrant. They, are, they smell wonderful. I thought it would be nice on this picture. So I considered other things that I could do here thinking maybe I wanted to add some red, but to tell you the truth, I'm honestly not that much into red. I really prefer more natural, woodsy, and, you know, kind of neutral stuff. As I've gotten older, that calming effect is kind of what I'm drawn to. So I'm just trying to keep everything that I add to it a little more neutral. And I'm satisfied with the way that it looks. Gonna use that handle from the bag and gonna make a little hanger for the back. This is easy enough to do. Put a little glue under it, put a little glue over it, and then a little piece of scrap paper on top of that. You're gonna do the same thing to the other side. Be sure that you measure first so that your string is not above the top of your sign. Unless you like that look, then by all means, go ahead and do that. Give that time to set up because that's a lot of glue there before you try to hang anything. Just be patient with it. Take your time. And there you have it. I always take a last look to see if there's anything else I want to add. Just to give you a good look. The writing there is blue and that's why I chose the blue for that ribbon. I hope you like it and I hope you consider making something like this. I thank you so much for coming back and for watching. Welcome to all my new subscribers. I'm glad to have you here. Are you into the rustic theme this year? Let me know because I can certainly do more. See you again soon. Bye. Let's make this gorgeous light up truck box for Christmas. Keep watching. Most of these supplies came from the Dollar Tree. We're going to take a triangle shadow box and several of these wooden ornaments. They come in packs of multiples. And then we're going to take the peel and stick vinyl. This came from Dirt Cheap, but it orig originally came from Target. It's like a peel and stick paper. You can use contact paper. You can glue down some construction paper or scrapbook paper, whatever you choose to use. But I wanted white in the background with a little bit of um, like shine to it so that it would reflect the lights that I put inside. So to take this apart, if you just gently press down on the corners and lift up on the frame, it should come out pretty well for you. Then you can just peel off the frame, all those little pieces of paper that didn't come off. And then I went ahead and started peeling the paper off of the sign. After peeling it, you can get a sanding block or a little bit of sandpaper and just go ahead and make your surface smooth so that you can put your peel and stick vinyl on there. 
and you won't have any problems with bubbling or raised up areas. If there, if it's a flat finish, then you don't see that stuff too much. But if you have any shine or reflection on the paper, then you will see that. You'll see any bumps underneath it. I'm just using the back to trace out my paper. Then I will cut it out. Then you get your fingernail between the edges of the paper and the backing. And then just carefully put that on. I've never tried to sand vinyl, so maybe you could. Um, I'm not sure. If you do know whether or not you can sand vinyl, you can put that in the comments. It might help someone else. I'm going to use my wooden ruler and just flatten this out, get the bubbles and ridges out. And because it was sanded underneath, I have a nice smooth finish. I'm going to use a little bit of hot glue to put the frame back down. Oh, and I also used some fix all. Yes, I did. I remember when I did this, which is just last week, that I wondered if. I'm not used to working with vinyl, so I didn't know if the hot glue would stick or if it would pop off like it does on glass. So I used a little bit of Fix-All and it is still together. Fix-All is for long term hold and the hot glue is just going to keep the piece together while I get it all assembled. And I had a little bit of hot glue come out and I'm just cleaning that up with some tweezers. So in order to make this three dimensional, I need to have something to hold them up and out. So I use these little blocks that came from the crafters area in Dollar Tree and they'll work great. You're going to take your ornaments and place them inside in the position that you would like for them to be in. I always do this before I glue anything down. I want to be sure that everything is placed where I'd like it. I want to take this tree and cut it down because I want there to be some variation in the height. And these two little trees with the holes are going to be on the outside. I think the light will shine through them nicely. I'm going to use some dull scissors that I have and just kind of scratch into the surface where I want my edge to be. In my mind, if I did this, I could just bend it and it would just snap an even line but it didn't quite do that. It needed a little more, a little more attention. So I got my bull nose pliers thanks to a watcher who informed me that that's the name of these pliers. I got those and used them to trim up the edge. And then I'm just going to sand it down so I don't have any splinters or rough edges. And so now I have a smaller tree to put on this edge. All right, now it's time to get these in order. Now if you use the tower blocks, they're a little bit longer and they are thinner. So you can see there's a difference in the and the size there which will make a difference in the depth when you put these down so they will be layered out and not sitting on top of one another. 
so it creates shadows and light and that's what I want in this light up shadow box makes sense right Okay, you can get a string of lights from Dollar Tree if you like. These are just the ones on the copper line. I got these from Dirt Cheap, and they're essentially the same thing, but they originally came from Target. Now I'm going to use the hot glue. It used E6000 on this. Just a little hot glue to tack it down. It doesn't weigh very much. We won't be touching it a lot, so it should stay there. If not, I'll fix it later. I got a new tripod for my anniversary, and it attaches to the table, so my angles and my filming should get much better soon. So if you've been around since the beginning seeing all these wonky camera angles, then I thank you for your patience. Hopefully it's going to get better real soon. I'm going to keep trying until I feel like I get it exactly like I want it. And we're just layering. So the back is one layer. The Christmas tree that is solid is the next layer. Then the truck. And then when we get to the outside, these two trees are the outside layer. Cute so far, right? Looks like he's riding through the forest picking his Christmas tree out. So here are the lights. I've got my batteries in and checked them before I went through the process of using them. Always do that. Check your lights before you use them. Otherwise, you're going to have to disassemble the entire thing. And that's just, that's a pain if we can avoid it. So... Excuse me, getting in the way a little bit. At the end of this line, there is, you can see there, there's some area where there is no light. And I'm using that area to go around the bottom of the box. And it's just a piece of that thin wiring. So the box will still sit flat. It, won't, it doesn't have any bulkiness to it. I'm just taping that down for now and then pressing down the lights and winding them all through the back layer. And because this is on a thin wire, it's really easy to move around and manipulate. You can just press it down and twist it around wherever you want it. At the very end, there's a little light all the way to the end, so I went ahead and put that through the hole in the top of the Christmas tree, so there's a little uh, light up Christmas star on one of the trees. I'm just pressing that a little to the side so that it will secure itself. And then you want to be sure that you hide all of your wiring behind it. Oh my goodness, look how cute. Isn't that adorable? It's like a sunset. Behind the forest. It's very Scandinavian looking to me because there's no bright colors or anything. But of course, if you like bright colors, then feel free to use some, some wild scrapbook paper and get your acrylic markers or your paint and color your ornaments before you put them down. You can even use flashing colorful lights if you like. So I'm just fixing a little area on the back with some glue and a piece of wire and a piece of paper that will hold my battery pack. I don't want to glue it down. And this way it's secured to the back and I can easily remove it and I can use this 
triangle or this box for another project later if I want to. Isn't that cute? This really did turn out better than I thought. I did get some interest, some inspiration from Pinterest, so I'll give credit there. But I think it turned out cute. What do you think? Do you like this? What would you do differently? I think the kids are going to love it. As always, thanks for stopping by and crafting with me. I appreciate you coming back time after time to watch my videos. I'd love it if you subscribe if you like these types of videos. And I hope you come back. See you again soon. Bye. Today we'll make this rustic joy wreath. Keep watching. So here are our supplies, but there's going to be a couple of other things we're going to need. We're going to need some floral wire, some of these woodcuts, either stickers or the trim around the stickers, some berries. You can get those picks from Dollar Tree. I just pulled mine apart. You can get pine cones or pine cone picks, and then some greenery of your choice. I've decided not to use frosted theme this time. We're going to use just evergreen. This is a 10 inch hoop wreath. It's an embroidery wreath. It's the inside ring. Those woodcuts came from the wedding section of Hobby Lobby and I got those 50% off. I am going to use the outside of these stickers as a stencil. So the stickers were gone. I'm going to use the stencils. I'm going to use Gorilla Glue to hold those blocks to the frame because they're quite heavy and I don't want them to, to fall off. In the scheme of things, they're not heavy, but you know, if you want it to stick to the side of something, it's a good idea to use a heavy duty adhesive. So I think the Gorilla Glue should do the trick. Most of these pieces have a flatter surface somewhere, so you just want to try to put the flattest side to the side of your hoop and then have your edges touching. Just using these clamps from the Dollar Tree to hold those in place while they stick. Use just a tad of glue in between and clean up any mess that might spill over. Once they've dried, you can remove the clamps and go on to using your stickers or your stencils. All you have to do is cut them to fit the size of the circle that you're using, the round that you're using, and then peel them off. I found that using my fingernail to press on the inside picks those up easier. If I didn't mention before, the stickers actually came from the Dollar Tree. So I'm going to put the center of my O on first, and then try to put that outside back in the original position. The surface of the wood is rough. You can sand it if you would like. If not, when you put these down, be sure you take your fingernail or something and, and kind of press these into place so that they don't come up when you're filling them in. I started off with an acrylic marker and the wood is so porous it just really soaks it up and I wasn't getting the coverage that I wanted. As you can see that here. Maybe a few coats of that might have done the trick, but it seemed kind of like a time waster. I started on the O and then gave up. So good old chalk paint to the rescue. I'm taking a stiff, flat little brush and just starting to put the paint down on the sticker outlines. You don't want to use too much paint, and since I've never done this method before, I was scared it was going to have a lot of bleed through. So aim for the center of your circle, or I mean your letters there, um, and don't push underneath the edges of the the paper there. Don't don't get under the edges of it, or it will bleed through. So I tried to stay sort of toward the center, and then use some up and down motions to get around the edges. It has seemed to do the trick pretty well. My Y was coming up a little bit, so you'll see me hold that down. So I didn't get as clean of an edge as I wanted to, but I'll show you in a minute how I fix that. I used two coats of paint 
on this and then when they were dry I just carefully peeled them up. The J turned out perfect. I had a little bit of a trouble um, removing the O from the center and I scratched the paint a little bit. It was dry but I scratched it and I had to get my tweezers to pull that off but I used an emery board later to kind of file that and get that off of there. And then on the Y, my edge on the right side was a little crooked or a little sloppy. So in a minute, I'm going to fix that with a chalk pen. The greenery is going to be on one side of the wreath and the joy is on the other side. So we're just gonna find placement for that and then start wiring your layers down. Put this wire on carefully so you don't poke your finger. And it'll just be sure that you you get it tight enough that it will hold it there, but having just enough slack in it and at least a few of the loops that you can use it as a holder to place your other picks in, if that makes sense. You'll see in a moment. So I'm putting on one more layer. You could just use one if you like. I'm bending up these pine cones so they're not sticking straight out. They kind of bend forward. And I'm slipping those through the wire. That's what I mean by leaving just a little bit of slack in it. And that'll help hold that in place. Now I've chosen four berry picks. You can use whatever you like. And just begin eyeballing where you want those to go and then using a little hot glue to put them in place. You might want to aim for the plastic part of the pick rather than the the little berries themselves because they can melt and then that's just a mess. And I am aware that some of these berries are scratched and have white on the outside. That can be fixed. If it bothers you when you get them, you know, you can fix that with a red marker pretty easily. Doesn't really bother me. Now we're cutting off the wire because we got everything we need over there as far as florals and I'm going to tidy up the edge of this Y. It is of course not perfect and I'm not aiming for perfection. I just want to make it a little bit neater. I'm going to make a bow to go in the center of our floral side and I've decided that this Dollar General and this Dollar Tree ribbon are a perfect match. So I am making what I will call the Olivia bow because I learned how to make this on Olivia Olivia's romantic home. You take several loops, I use six inches, fold them over and then take little notches on the sides. I'm gonna do that twice. Once for the polka dot ribbon and once for the vintage red truck ribbon. I'm just measuring against the little tape measure I have on the edge of my table. Gonna make my loops. Just counting. You can do a simpler bow if you like for your, you know, your wreath. Anything really can go there, any type that you like. Or you can go without and put a poinsettia or something in the middle if that's what you like. I'm gonna take this zip tie Put it around, make sure that it is in the notches. Gonna pinch my wires together to give it some shape. And then tighten up that plastic. And once the zip tie is tight, you can start moving around your bow. You wanna pull out and at an angle so that it kind of pops it out of alignment and it makes each little piece stand out on its own. Sometimes when I have an idea in my head, it does not come out my mouth the same way, but I think you can see what I'm doing here. So 
So it's a cute little bow. I like it. We're going to trim off the back. And there we are. So you can take a little bit of floral wire and just place it through the back and then twist it around to hold it in place. And I will be trimming that up later. Fluffing my bow again. There's something quite satisfying about fluffing bows to me. I like it. It's one of my favorite part of making a wreath is fooling around with that bow to get it the perfect little shape that I like. And a bow really does give a nice touch. So I've decided that my joy looked a little sad, a little joyless on the side, and I'm going to add some red berries over there to pep it up just a bit. I've just cut another piece of the pick into little strips and you know if you've seen my videos you know I always like to do a dry run is what I call it. Put it in there see how it's going to look before I actually glue it down when I can't move it. So there we go have my little berries on there and I'm going to make a burlap string a burlap cord hanger. It's really easy you can see what I did there and then you slip the end through the loop and pull it slide it over you're gonna to have to hold that up to see where the weight pulls the, the wreath because you're you may have more floral on one side that makes it heavier on one side or the wood pieces may be the heaviest part so you want to make sure that you put it where it's going to hang correctly and if it for some reason slides which jute usually doesn't um, you can put a little piece of hot glue there a little dot and it will hold it in place So I'm going to take a few strips of the truck ribbon and of the polka dot ribbon to just make a couple of little extra bits and pieces to give it a little extra something. And I'm going to make a very simple little, you could almost call this a bow, I, guess. I assume that you could call it a bow or you could just call it, I don't know, a piece a dovetail and end a tail maybe and I'm just going to tie that and then I'm going to tie it around the frame right above the J and I like that of all the inspiration pieces I've seen I have not seen one quite like this and I decided to use the word joy because you hear me talk about joy and, and finding what brings you joy and happiness and it's a word that I really believe in. I think it has a big impact. So I'm just going to put this in place with a dot or two of glue so it doesn't slide. Then you can bend that or have it lay straight depending on what you like since there's wire in it that makes it quite easy to do. I'm going to make a couple more tails and I will be cut off in a minute so you can't see how I complete it but I'm just going to stick those underneath the pine cones. One on the bottom and then there will be one also on the top. I don't know what happened to the end of that piece of footage. Thanks for coming back and for watching my videos. I'm having a lot of fun with these and I'm seeing that there is a lot of demand for woodland themed and rustic Christmas, which makes me very happy because it is right up my alley. So I will be doing more of that. If you're new here, I hope you subscribe and stick around to be part of our YouTube family. And thank you for those of you who have stuck by me all this time. I'll see you again soon. Bye. Today we're making deer decor from Dollar Tree. Keep watching. I'm going to start off with this deer piece of Christmas decor. You can get it in silver or gold, but I've chosen gold. Just going to remove the tags and the hanger. And we're going to need two of these signs that you can get at Dollar Tree. They are wooden signs. going to use my sanding block and just sand off where I have removed the stickers.
we're going to use the white sides on the outside so the decor the decorative part will be on the inside so when I had a mind to do this I was trying to figure out how I wanted to put my deer's little feet in there to hold them up I'm going to use a little bit of hot glue just to keep them in place while I put down my other glue. So I'm using some wood glue here and I'm just going to brush some of that on on both pieces. And I'm going to leave some space in between to use the hot glue. I'm not mixing the two adhesives, I'm just putting them just randomly in little spots. Press these together. Now I've used a clamp here and I've used a piece of paper underneath to keep my clamp from making marks on my boards. I'm gonna let that dry for 24 hours before you remove the clamps. To give it some extra security, I've used short staples and my staple gun and gone around the ends and the bottom. You can go back over this with some white chalk paint if you'd like, but I didn't. They can see there on the hoof it's chipped off a little bit. Not going to be a problem because I'm going to have an arrangement down there and it'll cover it up. This is rather, I want to say floppy, it's not very um, sturdy. Maybe when you do this you could put two deer together, I'm not sure. But my way of remedying this and having it stand upright is to use these building blocks or these um, tower, tumbling tower blocks that came from Dollar Tree. You get them in a box in the children's section, in the toys section going to use that and a little bit of wood glue and a little bit of hot glue on the bottom to secure the legs of the deer so that the body will stand upright. This is going to be a one-sided sign but you could certainly do both sides if you wanted to put it as a centerpiece or something like that. For me this was good enough it's going to be on a shelf most likely so only one side will be shown. going to sandwich the deer's legs between these and hold them so that the hot glue will sit up and give that wood glue some time to set up as well. I have some clamps that I got from the like the laundry section or the home section of Dollar Tree and I use them for quite a bit of projects and they work nicely for this. You can use whatever type of clamp that you want. You just want to be sure that you give that plenty of time because it would be a shame to spend all that time getting the base and everything together and then snapping off one of those legs. That would be terrible. So I'm just going to slide that block down just a little bit so that I can hide it behind the leg a little better. Let's 
So now he's standing upright a little bit better. I'm going to clamp that on and let that hot glue dry. Now it's time for the floral area. I'm going to use one side of it and I'm going to use just this scrap of foam that came from I think one of my Amazon packages. It was thin enough to sit here so I'm hot gluing it down. You can put another piece sandwiched on the other side if you'd like for a little extra support. And certainly if you're going to decorate both sides you'll need a piece of foam on the back side as well. These are some pieces of greenery that I picked out of some clearance. They were like little pots last year at the at-home store. They were 39 cents, I think, so I got several of the little pots. Now we're moving my clamp so I have a little more room to put in my greenery. I'm just giving it a little run to see if this is how I want it to look, and I think this will work. So a little hot glue will keep this all pretty much in place, both in the foam and to the, the base there. And I do have some chalk paint on my hand from another project, so I was trying to get a lot done. We have a birthday Halloween party coming up and family coming for the weekend, so I was trying to get a couple of these videos done recorded all at once. Now you see I pulled the foam up. I do actually fix that, but I edited it out somehow. But I did glue it back down. You want to be sure that you have everything secure there so it's not falling apart. Just want to play around and see what kind of height you want, how wide you want it to be. I wanted this arrangement to be rather low and wide so that I can still see my deer. That's what the focus is going to be, is the deer. These frosted or snowy picks, they're so pretty. And I knew that I wanted to use them for something this year for Christmas. If you don't have something that you've thrifted or pieces that you've already had, you can certainly take pieces from the Dollar Tree. They have lots of gorgeous picks and you can use those. You can flock some old Christmas tree branches if you'd like and use an old wreath and just clip pieces off of that. However you, however you want to do this. Just make it your own. Any color thing that you like. I prefer a more rustic look. So that's why mine looks like this. But you do whatever you like. The arrangement cost me very little money. The longest time it took was just allowing that wood glue to dry. Otherwise, it was an easy project to do for the results that I, I think that we got. Remember what I've said in other videos, be sure that you take a good look from all angles and see if you have any spaces that need a little something else. And if you do, just go ahead and add that in. Here's an example of that. There's a little spot that needs a little something extra. So I'm just gonna add a little bit of glue and fill in that spot. I hope you've enjoyed 
this video and that you like this project that you'll try something with one of these gear decor pieces I'm not the biggest fan of glitter but it looked very nice with this piece I think Thanks for stopping. today we're making a cozy Christmas or winter sign keep watching I have got some floral and greenery picks here these came from the first ones from the Dollar Tree from spring and these are some that are thrifted these little velcro squares you can get them at the Dollar Tree some thrifted black and white ribbon and some Dollar Tree ribbon those are both wired the sign came in a two-pack from Target originally and I got it from dirt cheap and then this came from Big Lots it was a fall sign I colored one side a kind of a tan color and the other side is chalkboard paint so we're going to use this side today. We're going to remove the hanger off the back. Those come off pretty easy. And position the sign down on the board. Now because I know I want a bow on the top, I'm going to need a little extra room up there for the size of the bow. Be sure when you get out your Velcro that you have one stiff side and one soft side so they'll stick together. These are peel and stick or have a sticky background, but I went ahead and added a little bit of Gorilla hot glue on there also. By using the Velcro, we have the option of changing the bow out. Now I'm going to use some hot glue to put the sign down. If you want yours to be interchangeable, you can always use Velcro on this as well because they're not very heavy. And then you can change your sign out. But I think I'm going to keep mine just like this. Now we're going to focus on the bow. I'm going to be taking two strips of this black and white ribbon. Probably came from Michaels or somewhere. It's a good quality, but I did get it from Goodwill. And I'm going to trim this off where it's one is two inches longer than the other ones. So I'm going to protect my fingers and put on some hot glue and I'm just forming a loop here. I'm set that aside and let it dry and I will work on the next loop. Same thing here. A little bit of glue. Press it together and just let it do its thing. Now I'm going to layer the bow and this is why you need the different sizes. It's stacked and you can see both layers. This final bow is going to be this burlap ribbon from Dollar Tree. We're going to do the same thing with this and it is of course going to be a couple of inches smaller than the other. Just loops, such an easy bow to make. So now we're going to stack up those rings. The glue is cooled and they're all ready. We're going to stack them up. My first attempt, I was having a little trouble getting it all in my hand, but if at first you don't succeed, right? Try, try again. So here we go. I have it all in there now. 
going to grab a zip tie. You can use white or black or any color that you have. It won't matter because it's going to be covered. I'm not going to tighten it all the way quite yet. I'm going to fold the bow and make sure that it's in the center. And since it was not tightened all the way, I could slip it down a little bit and get it in the center. Now we can tighten it up. Clip off the extra. It's a simple enough way to make a very pretty bow. So you can make a loop and glue that in the center if you want. You can leave it wide if you want, but I decided that I wanted mine to be a little more opaque and thinner. So folding it in half gave me that look. I'm gonna wrap it a little bit and put some hot glue on there. When you're doing this, uh, it would probably be best for you to push that zip tie closure to the bottom of the bow where the tails are going to be because if you don't, it's going to make it a little bit bulky. And I did not slip mine all the way down. And yeah, hindsight, but it turned out fine. It, but I think it would be better if you, it would lay flatter, you know, the other way. Now we're going to make tails for the bow. And I'm making about six inch on each side. So that's a 12 inch piece. Just kind of kind of fold it over on itself with both of the printed sides showing. And then just with a scrap of jute, I'm going to tie this in a double knot. I was clearly distracted when I was doing this because my fingers forgot what I was doing. I mean, look at that. That's ridiculous. But yeah, finally. Oh, and there we go. There we go. Now we have a knot. So you're going to trim off the extra. And that's how it's going to look. Now we have to put our polka dot piece on. So we're going to do another tail. It's going to be 10 inches because it, you want it to be a little bit shorter than what we used on the bottom. And because this is a stiffer ribbon, I didn't have to tie it. It will fold down and, and lay flat on its own without being held. Little hot glue and just attach those together. Same thing here. A little bit of hot glue and attach it. I went ahead and clipped mine together so it won't come undone while I am trying to do the ends of my ribbon. So to give it a more finished look, dovetails are the thing and it's easy to do. So cutting from the outside inward and upward to get those pretty little V's. And for safety reasons, be sure that you cut away from yourself and not toward your hand. It's because I love you that I tell you these things. All right. So that looks pretty good so far. I think that'll do. Now it's time to put the other side of that Velcro down. So I'm just going to use the glue again, just a little, and press it down. You want to try to get that on a flat surface because the more coverage, the more contact with the surface that you're putting it on, the better it's going to hold. Then once it is dry, you can go ahead and attach it to the top of the board. Look how pretty! You could actually leave that exactly like it is if you wanted. But you know me and my rustic love for all things rustic. I'm going to add some things here. I want to show you what uh, some options are here. So you can use anything that looks snowy, 
white. If you want to keep this neutral, you know, you want to stick to your creams and whites and greens. But I've decided instead of using those that I want to try something different. I'm going to take my two pieces of greenery and bind them together with the floral wire. Make sure you twist these where the snowy part, if you have snowy or frosted pieces that you have that side upward, that you have the correct side upward. So that's why you see me messing around with it so much. Got it. I'm trying to get it exactly how I want it. And they're wired, but they also have like a plastic on them, and so they slip around a little bit sometimes. So this was in a pack of, I think, Christmas tree ornaments that I got from Dirt Cheap many years ago. It was a bag of them. And I know I want to use that with this. It matches well with the wood trim. So I'm just cutting off all the little extra pieces there. And then I thought, hey, just to lighten that up a little bit, this berry vine that I got from Dollar Tree would work pretty well, I think. And so actually when I opened it up, I was surprised to see it's in two pieces, which believe me, makes it a lot more manageable. So there, now I have some for another project. So you do get quite a bit of this. At first I thought I could just maybe just make a wreath with this. So I wound it around my hand to form a wreath to see how that looked by itself. So you can certainly do it this way if you don't have the miniature vine wreath over there. You could certainly do it this way. And I'll show you what that looks like. But I like it being a little thicker. So I am going to take this and wrap it all the way around. Be sure when you wrap it that you have an equal amount going around the wreath and then clip off your excess. And I think that'll do it. So I apologize for this being a little bit blurry. It's a little out of focus here, but I, I wanted to show you how I just poked the floral wire through the wreath so that I could attach it down on to this greenery. Sometimes when you use hot glue on stuff like this, it doesn't get a good hold and it'll just pop right off. And this is an easy enough solution to make it stay until you want it to come off. And because it's green, you don't notice it at all. You just poke the wires behind it and you don't even notice it. So I'm gonna put it on the bottom. I thought the snowflake would be cute in the middle. Since it says, let's stay home, the snowflake seemed appropriate. I'm gonna add some glue there and there's some glue underneath to hold it to the frame. And this is the final result. I really, really like this. I can't wait to get to the other side of the sign and, and see what we want to do with that. Not sure yet, but maybe something with a little more color so it's a little more versatile. Thanks for coming by. I hope you subscribe if you like budget-friendly DIYs. we got lots more coming. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you again soon. Bye. Let's make a festive Whoville house. Keep watching. We are going to start out with the second of these little Halloween signs. I'll link the video for the other sign we made a gingerbread house with. We're going to start by taking off anything that would make the surface bumpy or rough. You're just going to sand that off. And then I'm going to put chalk paint on here. I'm going to chalk paint the whole thing. It's going to take two coats and be sure that 
when painting that you get all the sides and as much of the surface area covered as possible. If you paint the entire sign, then you have the option of doing something on the back side of it so you have a reversible sign. But today we're just going to work on one sign. Once you have full coverage and it has dried, we're going to start with the roof line. And I'm just going to take this, I don't know exactly what you would call this, pom-pom ribbon maybe. Measure off what you want and enough to cover from the bottom to the top of the roof line. Going to use hot glue to start applying this down. Careful with your fingers here, either use your protectors or use a spatula, something like that to protect yourself. We're just going to overlap. You can see I'm attempting to make sure that those little puff balls line up in the gap so that they're not stacked on one another but they have room to just fall fall there. Don't worry about the messiness on the sides, that's going to be fixed shortly. These things pick up a lot of lint so be sure you clean them up. You don't want dirty snow on your roof line. Now you can just trim this up. I suppose if you had a rotary cutter you could use that here also. I don't have one of those yet. Thinking about getting one. If you have one, what brand do you have and do you recommend it? Now we're going to work on the door. So I'm just using a scrap of paper to trace out my door. These are acrylic paint markers that I got from Amazon. Uh, they came with fine tip and with uh, like a bullet tip. I'll try to put that link for you in the description box. The house is going to need some decoration and a lot of color. So I'm going to freehand a lot of stuff. You're going to see me make mistakes. You're going to see me have like on this wreath that was kind of like a smushed donut. Like you can fix all that. Once you start putting down your layers, you can fix that. So don't worry if you mess up. Don't just scrap the entire project. Just start over. Go back around your edging and fix it. And if all else fails and you mess it up, let all of your layers dry and then just go and put another coat or two of chalk paint on top. Not a problem. And don't be hard on yourself. Use your imagination. That's certainly what I did here. I'm leaving in every mistake that I made. So see, I'm drawing out my peppermint candies. You'll see when I start coloring those what I did wrong there. So Whoville is the little village in the Grinch who stole Christmas. So you can see craziness all over the place and their design and it's just joyful and happy and that's kind of what I was aiming for in this. So I realized my error there with my peppermint stick um, candy and I went back and, and fixed it. Just went right over it. Doesn't matter there's pencil lines there. You can erase the pencil lines or just go over it. See there? Fixed. Not a problem. So when I started this project, I've already got the gingerbread house done, but when I started this one, I was thinking I would do another gingerbread house until I started realizing that the colors that I, were draw that I was drawn to for this project were looking a lot like a childhood book. So I thought, well, we're just going to run with that then. It was a creative spark, and you got to run with it when you feel it. There's my little door mustache. 
above the door mustache. So you can make swirlies, you can make crisscross, hashtags, polka dots, stripes, candy patterns, whatever you want to use. So these markers I am happy with. There are a couple little things that are probably uh, user error that I'm going to be working with. Um, for instance, when you color with these markers, these fine tips, if you use the tip straight down instead of at an angle, it tends to splatter the paint just a little bit. And I noticed that when I did the wreath, but it's it's very small. It's not it's not too bad, but you know, I'm learning from that and I just know that I need to hold the pen at a different angle. And that's okay. When I did that, no problem. So I'm going to add some bows here and there and pretty much what I'm doing is just doodling. I'll stop for a moment. You'll see me pause. I wanted to leave that in there so you could see that, you know, I didn't just sit down and just throw this all together at one time. No, I had to kind of look at it and see what I thought I needed here and there. That pen that I'm using now is silver because initially I didn't want to put any any heavy lines in it. I wanted my door to be paneled. Well, I thought I did at this point. But once I got it down there, I realized it's really too bold and not exactly what I was looking for in the design. But that's okay because I'm going to fix that later. I'm just going back in with a white pen to go over where my pencil marks were and clean up the edges of the red. It really makes the red pop when you do this. I imagine that would work with any of the darker colors. I'm just going to freehand some little arched windows here. I'm going to put a little shadow there and color that in. It's kind of hard to see that. I'll tilt it in a moment and then you'll be able to see. There you go. Kind of hard to see that silver at that angle. So as long as you hold that pin to the side, it works great and has a good flow. So I colored these yellow to almost look like there was light inside of the house. Since there's no window on our door. And then here I am with the thicker tip white one, a white marker. And I'm just going back over that silver to kind of dull it down. So it will look more like, mm, more like just shading on the door instead of this big bold gray and silver I don't know it just looked like it didn't fit to me just adding some more little swirlies here on my little design and I'm gonna put some little patterns around the window this video is for inspiration for you do it however you want to. Make your house look any way you want. You want to cover it from head to toe with something that looks like icing or, or with hearts from head to toe or candy from head to toe or top to bottom. Do it however you want to do it. I felt like I needed a little bit more greenery here. I'm going to make almost like uh, pine swags to go under the windows and then on the door. And adding some more bows.
You definitely have to be sure since this is paint that you give time for the layers to dry before you put anything on top because if if you don't, I'm pretty sure that would smear and it would muddy up that color. So where I did the red on the yellow would probably appear orange. When I finished, I decided to go back and outline everything in black. Now, I don't know why I like the look of this so much, but I do. I can remember being a kid and when I would color a picture, I always traced everything in black. For as long as I can remember, that was my preferred look. It made everything stand out better. And so in doing this in my little house that I made, I really, I don't know, it really felt like I was getting, I was getting somewhere. It was starting to be really the complete look that I was look, hoping for and the feel that I was hoping for. And so I didn't use exact straight lines. I used some little squiggles, some little dashes, some little dots. Um, you'll notice that around the wreath on the on the door. If you don't have this form that I used, mine came from Dirt Cheap and it was originally from Target in the Halloween section last year. You can always use one of those little house forms that you get from the Dollar Tree. And there's a variety of them. They have some gingerbread houses. Then over in the craft section, they have some that look um, like arrows maybe. And maybe you could even use an arrow for that. Use whatever form you want to. And you could really do this on construction paper or you could do this on foam board if you wanted to. And then you could just make a village. You can make a bunch of them, trace them out and fix them up. Maybe make them look exactly like you have in your imagination. Sometimes that's easier said than done though. I think you get it in your head, but then you can't, it won't come out your hands like you want it to. I'm adding some little red berries, little red dots onto the greenery there. And I'm going to add two tiny wreaths underneath here. And all the little dots that I put around that blue swirly line under the large heart, those are like Christmas lights, I guess. The little dots. I could have connected them, but I didn't. They look whimsical and I'm okay with that. At this point, take a look around. Look at your design, see if there's anything else that you want to add to it. Go to Pinterest, maybe get some inspiration from there. What do you think would look good with your house, the shape of your house, the colors that you're using? You can even add some stickers if you wanted to on here. I'm adding in some little lights or decoration onto my little wreath on the door. You can see the lines now. You get a better look at the squiggles and the dashes. And then I'm going back over with my thicker tip white acrylic marker. And that looks more like a shadow. That's more of the look that I wanted it to have in the first place. Okay, so I'm happy with my drawing and I'm going to add some trees on the side. And luckily with this form, there are some little spaces in the stand where I can add some glue. And I'm just going to take one of my clamps from the Dollar Tree laundry section to hold that tree in place until the glue sets up. And I think this is perfect. This definitely looks like it would have come from the Grinch movie. What do you think? Do you like this? Are you going to try it? You definitely should. Big welcome to all of my new subscribers. I'm so glad to have you. And for those of you who've been around, thank you so much. I love it. I'll see you again soon. Bye. Today we'll make a snowman wreath with this Dollar Tree sign. Keep watching. You're going to need a variety of picks. Most of these you can get from the thrift store or Dollar Tree. You're also going to need a variety of ribbons. Some of mine are thrifted, and the one with the snowman on it is from Dollar General. Get these ribbons um, wired so they hold up better for your bow. 
you're going to base your ribbon colors and prints and also your florals on what you see in the sign. So my wreath there was thrifted and I've just wrapped it with burlap, the four inch burlap strips, and then hot glued it. Go ahead and take the hanger and the tag off of your sign. You don't have to take this one off if you don't want to because it's going to be on the back. Now we're going to take some pieces of wire. You can use floral wire for this, or you can use Chanel stems or pipe cleaners if you'd like. I think these are a little bit easier because they're smooth and they will poke through the burlap weave pretty easily. I'm going to use some hot glue and put these on and just a little piece of scrap paper to hold them in place. Then once you get all four corners done, you can start working on the little floral piece that you're going to put on your wreath. These are thrifted. They are wired so you can just take the wire stems and then wrap them around, leave a little space in the center. Then I wanted to beef it up just a little bit so I've added two more into that and just stuck it down in the wire. Be careful, you don't want to poke your fingers. This will be secured better with a little bit of floral wire. It's thinner than a Chanel stem or a pipe cleaner, so in order to keep it from being too bulky, I'm just going to use this instead. And I got this from the thrift store. But you can get floral wire from Dollar Tree. This gorgeous berry pick that's frosted, it came from the Dollar Tree. I love it. It's very rustic looking to me. And believe it or not, I didn't have a lot of shedding or fallout of the berries or of the frost on there. So I'm, I'm happy with that. Definitely going to try to get some more of that. So I just separated that pick, three on each side, and just twisted that on. And I'm going to add a little bit more on top to kind of break that red up. I want this piece, this swag piece, to be fairly flat because in the center where my hand is, I'm going to be placing a little ornament. And I have to have room to put that down. So fluff it out and then wrap it around. I'm going to take the end of that stem and move it to the side. Okay, so here we have the wreath again, and we're going to go ahead and secure this sign down on the wreath. Burlap is very easy to work with because it has large weave, so you can poke those right through that. Pull them to the back, and then just twist them around like you would a bread tie. You can press all those down toward the center, or you can remove them, whichever way you want. If you want to use that sign possibly in another DIY, you might want to leave those pieces long. This wreath is definitely something that needs to be placed either on the wall or on a solid door so that you don't see what's going on in the back. Now, this is my frosty ornament, which is so cute, but you know at Dollar Tree, sometimes they come a little bit sparse and they have some gaps in the paint, some scratches where they've been damaged in the box or hanging. I'm just taking my Jot Extra Large Permanent Marker and just dotting that on, just dabbing it on, and it covers it up so well. I could not believe how much comes out of this marker. Not a messy amount, but it comes out perfectly. So we had to touch up the Frosty's hat and his little nose needed some trimming. So I'm just taking these little scissors that probably came with a manicure kit. I've had them in my craft set for a long time. Trim it up and then I'm going to sand it off with my little Dollar Tree 
foam sanding block. I'm using an acrylic orange marker to darken and deepen up the color that I, of his nose because it was more of a peach color. I want it to match what's in the sign there. So I've decided that maybe we can do a little bit better on his hat band. No problem. This is a foam ornament. Just peel that stuff off. And again with the marker. And I'm coloring that in. Look at that. That's great. That's a great way to fix that. And now you have more options to personalize your frosty hats. Just go in there, peel that off. Fix it right up. I'm going to use an emery board to sort of erase his mouth, which was crooked and had some gaps in it wasn't very pigmented and I'm going to use my acrylic black fine pimp marker fine tip marker pen and just go and put a new mouth down see he's looking better already now we're going to do a hat band and so these little pieces here of this accord and some they call it ribbon but it's more like cording both of these I'm going to just choose this satin black which also came from Dollar Tree and put that down first and then that little piece of I guess Rick Rack I think is what I called it in my haul video <laughs> I think that's what it is I keep wanting to call it that so I, somewhere in my mind that's what it is I'm gonna put a little hot glue on the back of that and then glue it down I'm putting the glue on the back and not on the front because I don't want any bubbling I don't want to take any chances of there being strings you know it'll just be neater if I put it all in the bag I think you don't want to use a lot of glue here because styrofoam and hot glue um, can be dangerous it can melt it so you don't want to do that so see there was our before and I think my after is better but he needs a little bit of greenery so the sign has frosty with a little bit of holly in the decorations so I'm gonna use this holly bush that came from Dollar Tree of course how many times have I said Dollar Tree in this video and I'm going to add just a little bit on the side of his hat is this looking a little dark I'm gonna use some of these little white berries which came from you guessed it Dollar Tree little hot glue in that hole there and put his nose right back in position the way it was before and he's so cute. All right, now it's time to put him back in his home. And we're gonna put him off to the side just a little bit in the center. A little hot glue on the back on the high points and press him down and when the glue sets, let it sit aside so the glue can set up and you can move on to your bow. So here is my Dollar General Frosty Ribbon. This is a great quality ribbon. I don't think that I have ever bought ribbon from Dollar General, but the quality of this is amazing. It's thick and the wire is very, um, I keep, I want to say stiff. It's, it's firm. It stays where you put it and I really like it. I'm used to using Dollar Tree ribbon, so having the opportunity to use something like this was, um, kind of an eye-opener maybe I need to go ahead and spend that extra dollar <sighs> yeah I'm so frugal you know I never want to spend more than I have to but man this ribbon has got my heart yes all right so here is some thrifted ribbon and it is just like a satin wired ribbon with a metallic red running through it I wanted to change my texture just a little bit. Don't want everything to be perfectly the same. This snowman ribbon is also from Dollar General. And I got it um, at the same time that I got the other ribbon. Also, very good quality. The fabric is nice and thick. And the wire is fantastic. I'm very very happy with it I think I've said that three times now so you should you should tell that I I'm very happy with it I'm gonna link a video where I made my bow maker so you can make one for yourself I sure did I made it I didn't spend the money or go to the store and buy it 
I made it with the materials I already had at home. You're going to fluff that bow out, fluff the tails under, and then you're going to dovetail. You can see me do that in just a moment. I'm just a bit out of frame here, but I'm going to fix it. There we go. So you're just going to cut from the wired edge to the inside upward, and that gives you a little V in the end of your in the end of your ribbon, and it gives it a more finished look, in my opinion. So we left that pipe cleaner that we wrapped around the center long so we could put it around the top of the wreath. Just secure that to the back and it's right on the top. Now if you wanted to, you could do this just in the opposite way. You could put your floral piece on top and your bow at the bottom, certainly. I'm just curling in those, those ends fluffing my bow up, getting it where we want it. See how nicely that Dollar General ribbon stays up? It's so nice. This is a Dollar Tree pick. And it's perfect the way it is. It's nice and frosted, so it's still got that snowman vibe. I'm gonna put that pick through there and then up on the back and it just will wrap around and, and stay right there. And this is what the final wreath looks like. It's so cute. I'm so happy with this. What do you think? Do you like the snowman theme? Do you want to see more? Because I have lots more ideas. In fact, I have another craft I plan to do this week to have ready for next week for you guys where we use thrifted items to make a snowman. So that ought to be interesting. And it's also going to be a wall hanging. Yeah, I'm still working out the ideas in my head. Thought about it last night when I was laying in bed. I said my prayers and then thoughts of Frosty jumped into my head. Welcome to all my new subscribers. I'm so happy to have you here. I hope you're enjoying what you see so far. Leave me a comment and tell me why you subscribe, what it is that you saw that convinced you to subscribe. And to those of you who have been here and are supporting me, I appreciate you so much. We have over 180 friends on my channel so far and I'm so happy very happy with that thanks for stopping by and I'll see you again soon bye today we're making Christmas tag signs keep watching option number one I'm going to take these vintage doilies a box top from Dollar Tree and a summer tag sign from Dollar Tree. That's how we're going to start. Just pointing out there that there's a faded area, but that won't matter because we have a way to hide that. I'm going to carefully pull those apart. I think they're kind of fragile. I'm going to cut off the tag. I mean the, uh, the hanger. And decide where we want to place it. You can get doilies, I think they're cloth, from Dollar Tree, and they might have some paper ones too. Pretty much going to use the same technique for this. So I've decided to slide that box top up to be closer to the top, and I'm going to trim this doily. And there we go. And then for the bottom, I'm going to use this one. Good old trusty glue stick from Dollar Tree. I'm going to gently add that down. I'm not going to be bearing down on this with the edge of that ruler because I don't want to tear those little delicate pieces so I'm just kind of pressing and pressing with my hands to stick that down on there and we're going to do the same thing with the bottom I think that these doilies give it a a pretty snowflake look and I haven't seen this done and I watch a lot of other youtubers for inspiration and I haven't seen this done yet so I thought this would be something 
fun to do. We're going to take the edges off of the box. You can cut these off or you can use an X-Acto knife or a rotary cutter. I don't have one of those yet. And then you have pieces left for crafting with later. Or you can do like I did and use a couple of those pieces to trim this out once you get it on the box. On the tag. This is pretty easy to cut out. It has, you just cut right along that fold. Be sure that you make it a nice clean cut as good as you can though, so you don't leave any, you know, any of that green on there on the sides. We want those gray sides to be flush with the sides of the side. Okay, so to hold this down, I'm just going to use a little bit of hot glue. This will easily pop off if I want to change this out at some point because this is regular, a regular, it's not Gorilla Glue in other words, so it should come off pretty easy. So now I'm trying to decide where I want to put my border. A little hot glue there and just press that in place. And I'm going to do the same thing on the top. I'm going to take my sanding block from Dollar Tree. Again, I'm all, I'm going to cry if I don't find some more of these soon. I might have to go to Amazon and look for them because I love these. They give the best edging really give a nice look. This is in a fast speed so you can't really tell but I am being very gentle around the doily so that I don't pull it and tear it. And the glue stick has worked well to keep it in its place. So when you go over the green there on the edge and on the edge of the box with that sander, it gives it kind of a white aged look, which I really like. And I think it's great for a rustic or farmhouse look, giving it a little history, if you will. Looks like it's been around a while. Aged to perfection. And there we go. So I wanted to add a little extra trim here and I'm taking a little of this jute cord, cutting a piece long enough that we can wrap to the back so we don't have to put any glue on the front. So if you hold it tightly in place, then it'll be in the same spot when you flip it over, just using little extra corners of those box top sides as little band-aids to hold down my, my cord there. And we want to do that on all the pieces. There you go. This bow came off of another project, but I'm going to go ahead and show you how I made this. So you can make one similar to it for yours. Just use some wired ribbon and you're going to need some jingle bells. Whatever color and style you like. see that I tore it off of another project. But since it's already made, I'm just going to use it. Now I'll show you how to make the bow. You're going to take a length of wired ribbon and this is about, hmm, I'd say about eight inches. You're going to fold it over into a loop or a circle and glue those ends together. Let it cool for a second, cut another piece lay it on top, squish them together, and then take a piece of cord, ribbon, twist tie, pipe cleaner, whatever you got, and put a knot in it. 
You can trim that off. Dovetail the ends of the bow. And then you're gonna take a little bit of hot glue and add some in the middle. That's all you have to do. So I'm gonna take this little stick or this little dowel here that I had in my craft stash. I'm gonna gently poke a hole back through the doily so that I can make a hanger. I'm gonna use a little hot glue on the end of this cord and twist it. That'll give it a nice point that won't fray so that I can easily thread it back through the original holes that the original hanger came through. And you certainly use the original cord if you want to and put it right back on. I want my knots to be in the front, so I'm just gonna make a little loose knot on each side. When you slide them back through, you can see the knot on the front. And trim off your little pieces that remain. And we're gonna put the bow down now. So you wanna get that centered and just put that bow up there to complete your look. So this is look number one. This is our red truck Christmas tag. That is a beautiful box top. And to think of someone just tearing through it, ugh, just breaks my heart. So here is our second option. Using the same package of doilies, we're gonna get two of those out. And they're really stuck together, so be sure that you you just have one layer or you're gonna have issues when you try to glue it. I wanna put these off center. And I'm going to add a metal snowflake and a jingle all the way metal piece that came off of another side of Dollar Tree. I'm gonna take dark steel and satin nickel and I'm going to take those outside and give each of those metal pieces a quick spray with the dark steel and then let it dry, go back outside and spray paint a little bit of the nickel on top, just a light dusting of it. Then I'm gonna take my glue stick and I'm gonna put this down while my metal pieces are drying. Again, patting down, pressing down to make sure that this glue is grabbing onto this paper. Be careful not to cover the entire board. Just do as much as you can and then go back along the edges where you need it. Pressing down firmly so that it gets all the little edges. You don't want anything peeling up because if it starts to peel, it could catch on something and just ruin your project. So be sure that you're really getting that down. Take your scissors and trim off can leave a little on the edge don't be no need to be exact on this because we're going to sand this down just like we did on the other one go along your edges and just cut cut okay sanding block again this is in a fast speed but you are going to be careful with this so that you don't tear any pieces or snag any pieces and destroy your project See, it just frays right off of there. Careful around the corners here. I had to slow it down for you to show you what it looks like, how I really do it. You gotta be kind of careful with this. And it looks like it was painted on, you know, from a distance. Obviously, if you're up close, you can see that it's not, that it's an applique, but it's pretty. And to me, it does look like there are snowflakes on there. So it's all dry. First attempt I made was with the glue from Dollar Tree, which was a no-go. So I went back with my Gorilla Glue. Be careful with this. 
don't put so much glue like I did. I didn't, I wanted to make sure that it stuck down, but I went a little bit overboard in some areas, which caused a little bit of bleed through. It is something that I fixed and you'll see that once this is dry in a few minutes. But yeah, it was kind of, kind of yucky. And to think I could have avoided it, mm, I'm hoping that you can avoid it now. Carefully place it where you want it because you don't want to slide it at all or move it once you put it down because it'll leave a mess. I just took a large plastic bag and a weight and covered this up. Once it is dry, this is how it looks. The Gorilla Glue did a fantastic job, but you can see where I have some residue here. I'm going to take a fingernail filer or an emery board and just file on that a little bit and that's going to soften that look you can you can definitely still tell but it's not as bad you gotta be super careful around that doily so see if you can avoid that by just putting on a little bit less paint that would be great I've saved the sign that I peeled the jingle all the way from for another project. So nothing's wasted and I, I ended up with two, two projects from one which makes them about 50 cents a piece. Okay, same process as before. We're going to glue the end of our piece of twine, make a knot on the front, pull it through and trim it up on both sides. Which one of these is your favorite? I'm going to make a little bow to go on the top. These are three 12 inch pieces of jute cord. I'm just going to make a little shoestring bow here. And then I'm going to decide where I want to put it. And it's going to be in the right corner. A little hot glue keeps it in place. I certainly hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. Thank you so much for stopping by. Welcome to my, all my newbies. Thank you so much to you guys who've been around from the beginning and enjoy hanging out with me here on my channel. I will see you again real soon. Bye. Today I've got two shabby chic thrift flips. Keep watching. So I went to my Goodwill bins and picked up these two pieces. This is a mirror. I've already removed it from the back to show you. These are not wood, they're like a plastic or something like that. They're old. And then also got this little, I don't know if you would call this a curio cabinet or just a little shelf that you hang on the wall or you can sit it up. It does have a flat bottom. They're both very pretty and scrolly and ornate. And they both need a lot of love. This thing is so grungy. It is greasy and dusty. It's so nasty. But easily enough, you can take the screws off the back. Look at that. Ugh. So thick. You just take the screws off the back, pop it off, and get it cleaned up. So I'm going to start off by just using a soft shoe brush to remove all the surface dust off of this frame. This one was much easier to clean. So I just used that and scrubbed it up really well. I didn't want to break anything, so the brush is a nice, nice, compact, easy way to clean those things. Then I'm going to take some alcohol on a terry cloth rag and just rub it really good and try to get in all the little cracks and turns and crevices. You can see all the dirt on that, that cloth there. And just get all of that off. You need to go around all the scroll work. Sometimes there'll be little spider webs in there and little gunk. Okay, so here's the back off of the shelf, and I've got it outside. My first step to very many steps to get this thing clean. Started off with some method degreaser. It's heavy duty. I was gonna use this brush, but it was, I could just scrape it off with my finger. It was so thick on there. So I'm just going to spray this down quite heavily. 
and let it soak. Then I had to soak it in the bathtub. Then I had to use dish soap and vinegar and baking soda. It was just a process. I can do another video on that if you like. I used my Rust-Oleum 2X after everything was clean and dried in the sun. And so here's two coats on here on the mirror frame. And it turned out very nice. I was sure to get in all the little corners and spray it from all angles. It was a new can of paint and it took the entire can of paint to do these two items. So here is the shelf without the back on it. Isn't this a beautiful piece? This is definitely something I'm gonna be keeping. Now when I spray painted this, I was sure to do um, the bottoms of the shelves, the top of the shelves, the inside walls, and all of that with the paint. So it has been thoroughly covered. It's not streaky, but it kind of looks like it in the, in the shadows there. It cleaned up quite well, but like I said, it took lots of work to clean it up. That's a big transformation. Even without going any further, that's a huge transformation. It looks like a totally different piece. So I'm going to take some of this wax. It's like a wax stain. I think I've called it Waverly, but it is not Waverly. It's like a home something. Can't remember the name of it. And then I have this little chippy brush. And I'm going to start using this on my mirror frame. So you just want to dot a little bit in there and you want to wipe some of it off. I went a little too heavy handed the first couple of swipes. So, you know, I learned better. I did better the next time. But, you know, it's just, um, it will wipe off easily. So if you do what I do and you've got a ton on there, there you can easily fix that when you go back over it and wipe it off. So, none to worry. I wanted to be sure that I got down in all the cracks and the crevices, just like when you clean it, because this is going to bring out all the texture on this piece and on the other piece. So I'm going around all of the scroll work, I'm going around the indentions that are around the outside and the inner part of the frame, and then see I just use a dry cloth to wipe over all that wax and it leaves the wax in the low spots and the high spots remain uh, a nice cleaner whiter color i'm going to do the same thing here and you can see when you put the wax on the difference that it makes the age and the dimension that it brings back to the piece you can certainly leave it white but i think i prefer it this way i want it to look old it's an old piece it has old detail and i don't want it to look brand new. It wouldn't look quite right in my house if it did. So once it's all wiped off, this is how it looks. You can see areas where the darker spots have stayed. And then I'm just going to set it aside and let it chill while I work on the next piece. I'm going to do the same thing here. And with this one also, since it's a shelf, I'm going to be sure that I get all over the top edges of the scroll work that's on the top. All of the greenery and the flower and the, it's like a fleur-de-lis in the center. I'm going to go around that really well. I'm just going to make this thing look like it's been, it's almost like putting the age back into it. After you make it look new with the white paint or whatever paint you're using, you want to put the age back into it. I'm just flicking that brush back and forth across the edges there on all of that trim and from a bunch of different angles. And it's the same situation here. Get in all the grooves, get in all the cracks, the corners. I'm getting on the base of the top. And then you can put a little bit on your shelves if you, if you feel like you want to do that. But you can see here how it is there on that work. You can see that on the little leaves in the scrolly part. I love this. And then of course you can see me down there on the bottom and I'm just putting it on there as well and getting it all along the sides. And this is how it is looking. Much better. It really brings out 
all of those details right there. It's just gorgeous. You can rub the wax in more. You can put less wax on it in the first place and you won't have as much to remove. Whatever you want to do with that. But I love how it turned out. So now we're going to go on to this old mirror, which is grubby and you, you don't even realize it's as dirty as it is until you see the cloth that you're using and it's absolutely filthy. Did you see that? Ugh. So there's some spots on here and I didn't know if they were going to be able to come off or not. So I'm just sure to get around all of the streaks and spots to see if they're permanent or if they can be removed. I just started off with a, um, it was some tissue paper I think that I had laying there. And then I'm using a microfiber. It's, like, it's actually a sock to uh, dry that off. Then I'm going to pop this gently back in and grab the original backing that was there. And I'm going to cover that with some cardboard or you can use construction paper. You can use felt. You can use whatever you have. But I had a piece that was approximately the size of this and I went ahead and used it to cover the back of it to make it look a little bit better and to give the mirror a little more stability that I do not want that thing to fall out so I'm just putting these little whatever these are back in screwing them back down and this is the result a little closer look of what this mirror is going to look like now we're going to work on the backing. If I would have had another piece of vintage paper, I would have used that, but I didn't. So I'm going to go ahead and use this burlap, which I think will be a nice backing as well. And I think it'll look fine with my farmhouse decor. So I'm just going to add a little hot glue. Make sure that when you cut out your burlap fabric that you have enough on the sides that you can roll up. I did cut one side. I actually had it all cut correctly, but as I was pulling to glue it down, I actually pulled too much on one side, So, but I fixed it. So now I'm just going to, excuse my hair, I need to get my roots done. I'm going to fold that corner over to make it look nice and neat, add a little more glue there, and then you can put a clamp on it to hold it in place while you go along and glue the rest of the edge. So I'm gonna do that all the way around. And this is the final look of that. You can definitely iron your burlap um, if you wanted to do that, but I'm not worried about it because it will lay flat once I get it on here. I do realize I'm putting this back on upside down, but it fits exactly the same either way. So I'm not going to make a big deal out of that. No one's going to see the back of it, right? It's going to be on the wall. I'm going to add my hangers back that go along the top and all the original screws that came out of it. You can use a little bit of construction paper, cardboard, uh, poster board, whatever you have to go on the back if you'd like, or you can leave it um, naked because it's going to be against your wall most likely. And then this is how it looks with the backing on it. I suppose you could just go without a backing if you chose to, or put some paneling back there. Some, some chippy wood would be pretty in the back too. And here we go, nice and styled. I just have some of my miniature baskets that I collect and a jar of beads and a little bit of greenery laid on there to give you an idea of how it looks. Uh, this is my basement and the walls are green down there, Had not has not been painted. So I just want to show you what it looks like against the green and then you can kind of get an idea, um, you know, of how it would look if you had it sitting, but it's not hung on the wall. In this picture, just got it sitting and it's nice and secure that way. I think it was worth the work. Turned out looking great. And then here is the mirror. And it's just hung up there for you to see. What do you think? Which one do you like the best? And do you think that these pieces would fit into your home decor? Is this something you would be interested in trying? Thank you so much for stopping by. I hope you will subscribe if you have not already. And I will see you again real soon. Bye. Summer on my mind, pop, hosted by Crafty Lenny. Details coming. These are the projects I chose for today with the theme of summer. Project number one, 
I'm going to need a basket. It is one of two that I have that I thrifted and I'm going to use magnolias. They're one of my favorite flowers and I have two of these trees in my yard. These are some foes that I got from Goodwill. I also have some burlap strips, two different thicknesses and two different colors. One's a little more sheer than the other. And then I just have some tulle that is white. I'm gonna be using some floral wire. You could also use uh, the little pipe cleaners or Chanel stands if you would like. But first I'm gonna get the dust off of these flowers. Just using a little paintbrush to do that. I'm going to fix the florals on their picks and stems just kind of twisting those leaves around a bit and I'm gonna start laying them out how I would like for them to show up this is a good arrangement to do if you have a glass door that you want to put it on because you can see the other side is going to just be the basket and you won't have a mess back there like you do with some wreaths and floral arrangements that you might want to put up I'm just going to add these picks where I feel like they look right. I move my things around quite a bit. And remember, if you have florals that are fake or silk, you can always bend the wires to have them in the direction that you would like for them to face. I'm going to use some of this floral wire to make little picks and ties. I'm just going to fold it over like a hairpin, push it through the, that open mesh in the back, and then twist it, and it'll hold it in place. I'm going to do the same thing with the greenery. You can stack them together and wrap them around. And this is what it's going to look like. You can always go back in with some hot glue and a little spare greenery and put that around wherever you would like if you see spots that need a little more filling. But I think this looks pretty good. Everything seems to be happy where it's at. Just gonna pull a few things out. And now we're gonna work on our bow. I am going to use 16 inches of this open mesh. And then the one that's a little bit more closely woven, I'm gonna do the same thing here. Cut that off. And then I'm just going to cut about the same amount of the tool. That's hard to see against this background. Now this bow is going to be super easy. Protect your fingers. I didn't do that here, but I was very careful how I was holding it. You're going to fold those over on themselves right there on the edges and press it down. Put it aside so it can cool. And we're going to do the same thing with this one going to wrap that one over a little bit more so it makes the loop a little smaller so see there you have a little extra in the back it's a little shorter on the second layer and then I'm just folding this last one up no rhyme or reason to that now I'm going to press this bow pinch it and then press it together in the middle I'm going to take some jute cord and I'm just going to tie that in a couple of knots to hold that bow together. You can use a twist tie for this if you want, or you can use zip ties, floral wire, whatever you have. I'm trying to go through some of the supplies that I have now. And jute is what I happen to have a little extra of. So these are just pretty much scraps that I have left. And I'm going to trim these down to make the tails. I'm using 12 inches of each of these. I'm going to cut those after I stack them right down the middle. And then I'm going to trim off the stitched area because I want to have a rough edge on this. I'm just going to trim it off and I'm going to set it aside because it will be used in another project. Same thing on this one. And then you can just start pulling the loose threads off to give it a little frayed edge on both sides. 
Now going to the darker ribbon, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to cut it and then just start pulling some of the edges loose from that. see they come off very easily. Now I'm going to stack them with the darker color in the back and the lighter color on top just like I did with the bow. You can go trim up anything that's sticking out or that doesn't look right. And I'm going to put these together. So there's a little bit of glue here a little bit of glue there and we have the tails for the bow. Pretty simple. Now I'm going to put some glue on the top of that and place the bow that we've already made right in the center. So fluff the bow just a little bit get an idea of what it's going to look like when we're getting ready to use it and give that glue some time to dry. And this is what our bow is going to look like. So we have to have a way to attach it and I'm going to do the same thing with the wire that I did before. I'm just going to make a loop like a hairpin, stick it through there and then I'm going to put it right above where I already have a hanger. Once it's secured I'm going to use a couple of dots of glue to give my ribbon tails a little bit of movement. Just going to put a dot of glue there because I'll be repurposing this um, form at another time. Just a couple of little dots of glue to hold it in place and then you can also do the same thing on the other side and put it in your floral section if you'd like. Now I'm going to just make the extra little tail part with the tool, tuck it underneath, and then there you go. So this is project one and this is a wreath for my door. This is my front door and it is all glass. And here's my beautiful magnolia arrangement. Project number two. I'm going to be using some of these decorative balls. These are um, different types of almost, I want to say wooden and also vine. I'm going to use a five inch wreath and one of the bigger um, orbs here. It has wire on the inside, like a wire frame or a metal frame. I'm going to do what we, what's going to be my bottom right now is what I'm attaching to it. This is like my base. And I'm going to attach this in four sections and leave a little bit of my pipe cleaners there. Leave a little bit of length, like an inch probably, on each section. And I'm just going to go into quarters and do one on each quarter. All you have to do is kind of bend a little loop to make it thread through easier. Then I'm going to do the same thing right in the center of, of that section, right on the bottom. Next I'm going to use some jute cord. I've got about 16 inches but you can vary the lengths and you're going to tie off each of these orbs. Do a couple of knots so that it is nice and secure and be sure that you tie it on a piece that is actually attached and not loose because sometimes they will be loose. Now, I flip this over and on the center top, what's going to be our top, I have just fed a little bit of that jute through there and I'm going to do a little knot so that I have a hanger right there on the top. So there you go. This is going to hang. Now we're going to flip it back over to the bottom. I'm going to undo the twist tie just a tad and start adding the ropes with the smaller orbs on it. I'm going to twist that in and then I'm going to trim off the little extra because I don't need the extra anymore. Do the same thing with each of the other sections. You want to vary your length but since we're not cutting it or tying it down, twisting it up in this will allow you to, to look at it and make adjustments. Make it higher, make it lower however you want to do these because you do want these to be hanging at different levels. And this way you can pull that jute back and forth through the loops that you have in that chenille stem. So next I'm going to start pulling off some greenery that I have. 
Just pulling off all these little segments. These are all thrifted. Every bit of this is thrifted, except for the jute. And I'm just going to start adding these in where that big orb meets the little wreath that's underneath it. So there's a little, little space there, and I'm going to put these pieces. I don't know what kind of greenery this is, but I like it. It's very airy. And I'm just going to do that all the way around. Then I'm going to add some to the top of each one of the smaller orbs. I'm going to add two, one on either side of each of the smaller orbs. It's very easy to do. A little hot glue will hold it in there. You can use a different type of adhesive if you were going to have this outside in a windy place. Um, you know, however you want to do it. Then I'm going to take little strips of jute and I'm going to tie bows in the top over the knot on each one of these. That's going to give it a little added security because it is right underneath the knot. Sorry, I'm out of the out of your sight right there for a moment. And then I'm going to take three strips of 10 inches and I'm going to tie a couple of little stacked bows in the center. And I just want to remind you of the rules. You can find it in the first card of this video and in the description box. But I also want to let you know that it is a hop. So that means you have to watch each of all the eight videos. And in the description boxes of each video, there's going to be a link that will send you to the next video. You need to leave a comment on each one that you watch, each of the eight. And this is going to give you a chance to win $80. Here you follow all of those rules, and good luck. Now, after the bows are tied, I'm just going to go up and add four or five pieces of that same greenery to the top. Here it is completed. A little piece of porch decor. I think it's gorgeous. What do you think? Summer is, when I think of summer, I think of sitting on the porch with a glass of iced tea. Oh yeah, and all the good stuff. Now here's the last little project, and this is a little bonus project really. Very simple. I'm just using some cans in two different sizes. That's greens and some black eyed peas came in because I live in the south. I'm just going to use some extra scraps and bits that I had left. I pulled off the edges to make them rough. I'm going to hot glue them down the seam there. I'm going to use the other one to do the other can. I'm just going to trim it down, take the edges off, fray it out a bit, and add it to the larger can. These cans could be used for artificial um, candles. It could be like the flameless candles, or you could use greenery. You could put flowers in them. You could put shells in them, whatever you want to do. You can make this your own. It's what my channel is all about. Just glue that down. And remember those scraps trim that I had? Well, there we go. I'm going to use one here. going to take some of that greenery. It's a little bit different. The color is a little bit different on these. This might actually be eucalyptus. Just going to adjust it a bit. Then I'm going to tie it off. There you go. That one's done. Now I have this from a project that I did earlier. It's a little bit thicker, a little bit longer, but it is burlap. I'm going to take a little finger full of that same greenery, put it down, tie it nicely, and I'm going to trim that off. So we don't need anything to help catch the wind and take it off the porch. And this is what they're going to look like. Nice. If you want to add greenery like I did, this is what you do. 
I'm keeping it simple with some neutral colors here, but you can do whatever you would like for yours. I'm not even using any foam. I'm just using what I have, making this super simple for this last project. Cutting these in different lengths, not even cutting the flowers. I'm just folding them over and poking them down in there. Adding some more, added some more pieces. There you go. Thank you, Miss Crafty Lady, for being the hostess for this video and for this challenge and collaboration. Be sure to check out her show live on Saturdays at 7 Eastern Standard Time. Thanks for watching, y'all. Bye. Today, I'm happy to be doing the Farmhouse DIY Challenge hosted by Heidi Sandel. The links will be in the description below. We're going to make two thrift flips for my Farmhouse DIYs. For Farmhouse Project number one, I have three of these little coat hanger hooks from the thrift store. I have a Dollar Tree picture and I have a thrifted, so it's like a karate belt holder. I just pulled the elastics off of it and filled in his name with the wood filler. I'm going to take my Rust-Oleum chalk paint in white and I'm going to give it three coats and let it dry thoroughly. I'm going to use my Krylon Fusion in metallic copper to spray my hooks. Once my board is dry, I'm going to decide where I want to put my picture. I'm going to use these command strips to put them on. This way I can change my project out for the seasons and put a different picture on here. Just follow your directions for the command strips. They're very simple to use and my experience has been a positive one. They work very well. Just going to place these down and press them in place. I'm going to follow the amount of time that I'm supposed to on the directions and then I'm going to flip it over and place it sort of in the top of my board and this way it's going to cover up um, that name a little bit too because it does still show just a little bit through my chalk paint. I'm measuring this to make sure that I have it in the center before I press it down. Although these strips are removable and you can fix it if you make a mistake. So as the directions say you're going to Pop the picture off and then let those strips cure on the picture and on your board. So I'm just going to set it aside and start working on my hardware. I love the plank look of this sign. That's what really made me choose it. So I'm going to take my gorgeous little copper hooks and look for what placement I want for those. I think something like this would work and still give plenty of room if I decided to hang any type of decor or hats or clothing on here. Just going to measure and then use my pencil to mark the dots where I'm going to put my screws. Now you'll see that I would only have one, two, three, four, five, six screws and there are 12 holes. I'm working on using the items I already have in my house rather than going out and buying more. So I'm going to make use of what I have and then I'll show you how I fix the missing screws until I can get some replacements. So now I'm just finding the center to put the last one on there. I don't do any pilot holes because this is actual real wood, but you can certainly do that with your drill if you need to. And I'm just going to slowly work these into the wood. Twist it around to make sure that it's straight and then I'm going to do this to all three of my hangers. There they are, nice and strong. So now back up to the picture part and it is cured. It's been there for the right amount of time and I can flip it over and now attach it. 
Okay, so I'm going to take two different color of my Deco Art metallic paints. They're both coppers. I'm going to just take a little scrap of cardboard on the side, mix my two different colors together to try to get as close as I can of a match to the spray paint that I used on these hooks. I'm going to go over each one of those black screws with this metallic paint. You have to be very careful. Um, I didn't want to do this beforehand and then use the screw gun and then take the paint away or lift it or chip it or chip it. So I just went ahead and um, dotted this on here afterwards. If you're afraid that you're going to make a mess, just be sure that you have um, something that you can put around the edges, maybe a piece of paper or something to keep it from making a mess on your pretty white clean finish. I'm going to do this to each one of these screws carefully around the edges. And then it's in fast motion, some of it, so take your time though. Then I'm just going to use the same color paint and just dab in those little screw holes on the bottom where I don't have screws yet. That works great. It's okay for me, and it doesn't have to be perfect. Our projects are about making it our own. And so, you know, this will be in my house and it's perfectly okay for me. Now I'm going to sort of dry brush the color that I came up with on top of the other so that everything sort of blends and coordinates and matches together. Just gonna brush it over some of the edges and the high points. And then I'm gonna go back and add a little bit of that to the picture frame. Is that frame is coming off a little gold in the camera, but it's actually more of a bronzy copper color. I could also have used some wax, but this is what it looks like. You can use this to hang hats, coats, your purses, uh, big keychains. You can use it for wreaths or decor. You could use it for scarves. You could really use it for anything. And then you can, because we use command strips, we can pop that picture off and we can change it out seasonally, which would be wonderful. You could also put it on your porch with a beach picture maybe, and use it to hang beach towels. What do you think? I think this is definitely farmhouse. It doesn't have much distressing and the wood is stark white, but I think it'll do the trick. Maybe it's more modern farmhouse. What do you think? All right. On to the next. Here's number two. This is a thrifted piece that I got from Goodwill. It is quite dirty. And it needs some love. So I'm gonna clean it up nicely. Now you see that it is all clean. I lightly sanded over the scuff marks and I spray painted it two coats of the flat white paint. Just a little bit on the inside, you won't be able to see it. Then I'm going to take this antiquing wax and a stippling or a stencil brush and I, it's a dry brush and I'm just going to go over all of the high points and the edges and ridges in this little hanging planner. Go down there in those little grooves. And then I'm just going to take a dry tissue and use a dry cloth or a dry brush if you'd like, and I'm just going to lightly rub over that. This is to give it a slightly aged look, and this is how it looks. Maybe more of a romantic farmhouse or a cottage farmhouse. Here it is outside. Thank you so much for stopping by and checking out my videos. Thank you, Heidi, for the opportunity. I'll see you again soon. Bye. You won't believe this thrift flip. Keep watching. So we're going to start off with this that I got from Goodwill. This is a sort of a, I don't know, organizer that you hang on the wall by your door. We're going to give this thing a makeover and let me tell you, it is extreme. So keep watching. You can easily remove the backing here. So you have lots of options and the possibilities are endless. But it does need some cleaning. So we're going to Get to doing that just using these little antibacterial wipes and just wiping this entire thing down front back sides top around the hardware every bit of it it's always important to clean up your items when you get them from a thrift store anyway because you don't know what their previous life was like and you don't know you know what germs you're bringing in look at all that dirt
giving them a fresh start. So a bath is the first part. Then I'm going to use my metal ruler from Dollar Tree and pop out this little, I don't know, it's almost like a wicker insert. Clean that up. And I'll take the back off and the cork board off. Put it to the side. That can be brushed off too if you want to brush it off. I'm going to take a just my regular little screwdriver. I keep in my tool kit over here and I'll remove this hardware. This makes it so much easier when you are painting an item. Just take the hardware off. Otherwise, you're going to have to paint. You're going to have to tape all around it to keep from getting paint on it and it slows your process down. So this makes it a lot quicker. Those are tiny screws, so be sure you put everything together in a bag or a bowl. Place them to the side and I'm going to use this Rust-Oleum 2X flat white paint. I'm going to take it outside and give it two coats. I left the black, the back of it just plain. Okay, so now it's time to replace that hardware. I did clean that off. It's black, so it's going to go with pretty much anything. I didn't notice any scratches or damage to it. But if you like a rustic, a rustic or aged farmhouse look, then, you know, rusted pieces would be fine. You could also take your hardware and spray paint it. Any metal color that you like or whatever works in your decor. The likelihood of finding a piece identical to this is probably not too high. However, my channel is about making it my own, so you make it your own. This is for inspiration because I want you to see what a difference just a little bit of extra time and loving care can do to a project. And this piece, I probably paid maybe a dollar and a half. So then you're going to take some fabric. This is also thrifted fabric. Apparently someone was, there was a bunch of remnants of fabric. So apparently someone was either maybe making masks or making quilts or crafting with it. And I decided it would be great to cover up my little piece of cork board. Plus, I'm totally into lemons. If you've been watching my channel, you know how I'm obsessed. Now, I'm just picking which part of this image would be the best, which one's the best fit, and which piece I like the best. I'm taking my rotary cutter. These things are so sharp. And just going down the sides, I want to make sure that I have excess on both sides, about eh, maybe an inch, because I want to wrap it around the back. I won't be gluing this down on the front. We're still going to use it as a cork board. Now I'm just going to reload that glue gun and start on the back by adding some glue, folding it over and pressing it down. Please excuse my nasally voice. My allergies have gone wild. It is full-blown spring here in southern Alabama where I live and my sinuses are getting hit pretty hard. So I sound a little strange, that's why. Okay, you can pull out all those little extra strings on the back if it bothers you, but no one's gonna see this. Okay, so if you notice when I pop it back in here, there's still some space that didn't get covered. And that is so easy to fix. I'm going to use a little bit of ribbon and just trim that out. This is some Christmas ribbon that I had, I think, from Dollar General that I got on clearance. No, maybe Big Lots. I think it was Big Lots. I'm just going to add a little bit of glue on the top to hold that piece in place. sure you leave it longer on the edges so you can wrap it around the back. Same thing here on the bottom. Just going to go all the way to the edge and I think it's a nice detail. It looks good with the fabric that I chose. And you're just going to fold this over. Remember there's going to be a backing on this so there's no need to finish this out in any way. Okay, so there's our court board portion. I'm going to place this in the bottom. I think this gives it a very pretty cottage look. Put the backing back in place. And then press the tabs back down. Now that portion is good to go. Now we're going to work on the top. 
I got some of these little signs. They were already pre-made and they had like a little hanger on them. I just pulled the little hanger off the staples and I'm gonna hot glue this section to the top. I don't need those little open spots, nor do I need that wicker looking panel for the back. I thought this would be a great option if you wanted to personalize it with your name or put a particular date that you needed to remember or maybe even a scripture or saying that you enjoy. Now we're gonna work on this second panel here in the section in this section and it didn't have any tabs so I'm not sure what was there in the first place we're gonna fix that by measuring it I think this is a four by six and I'm just gonna trim down some foam cork board which came from Dollar Tree by the way you can get pretty fabrics also at Dollar Tree if you're lucky in your craft or square section you could use an old pillowcase or a sheet or a napkin piece of a tablecloth whatever you wanted to use just you know, think outside the box a little bit, make it your own. So once I get that cut down, I'm gonna make sure that it fits and it does. Now you could leave that white if you wanted to, but I wanna cover it with a coordinating print. So I have some of this that came out of a paper pack from Target and I got it at Goodwill, I think. And I'm just going to, it's a green, black and white, kind of a plaid. I'm just gonna measure that out cut it out and then glue that down. You could use a glue stick if you want to or just use some dots of hot glue and put that down on your around the edges. And I'm just going to do the top and the bottom. There's no need to cover it in glue. And I'll have a nice flat smooth finished look. I think it looks good with that print that I'm already using. And I've chosen a sticker from a, it's like a dimensional, see there, sticker from Dollar Tree. They have several packs of these are really, really nice quality. And I've used them in projects before. I'm just gonna press that down and then using a combination of my scissors to give it a rough cut. And then my, I use manicure scissors for detail scissors. You'll see those here now. I'm going to go in around closer to it and just trim that out. I wanted to give it some dimension and have it stand off of that section just a little bit. So it kind of crushed it down just a little bit when I was cutting with my scissors at the wrong angle. Just went back in with a uh, pin and fixed that up. Touched up the little pieces that should have been black that kind of looked white because they were had a little dent in it. And I just fixed it. A little hot glue. I'm going to put it in the center. Matches nicely with the backing there and with the bottom section. Look at that. Perfect. Use a little bit of hot glue in there and hold it down. Now, I wanted to let everybody know we are at about 536 subscribers right now, and I have decided to reward myself with a Cricut silhouette or something of that nature, some type of a vinyl printing machine. Once I re reach, blah, blah, antihistamines, when I reach a thousand subscribers. So if you can help me get there, I would appreciate it so much. You can do that by liking my videos, by commenting, and definitely by sharing. Because when you share it with people who like this type of thing and they like my videos, they subscribe too, and we have more people in our family. So that's the idea. And I really, really, really want a a cricket. So if you could help me with that, I would appreciate it so much. And I promise you when you do that, you will continue to get these wonderful videos from me of all these thrift flips and Dollar Tree videos and all this craftiness on a budget. I appreciate you so much. Thank you for stopping by and I will see you again very soon. Bye! Be sure to follow me on my social media. Thank you so very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed these videos. And if you do, consider subscribing. Have a great day.